630-ish, maybe 631. Uh, are there any additions or adjustments to the agenda? Oh, gosh. Oh, man. It'll be easy if you email these out. He doesn't have anything handwritten. I don't. You don't have any adjustments? I I probably do, but I can't think of them. <laughs> That's right. But I did want to say that Northern okay. Borders is it's one of those wonderful spell check things. Um, oh, yeah. There's no A in Borders. Unless we're talking about something different. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Northern Borders? Not people. These aren't Canadians coming to the same area? Well, they could be. Okay. The other thing is, it's really the northern border region. It's the border, border, not border. It's, it's, it's not northern the national border region. Yes, yeah, it's northern It borders. is northern border regional grant. Yeah, I usually leave the S off in the minutes. It's, it's not an S, you're right. But everybody says the S. Yeah. Yep. True. Thanks for spell checking. Okay. Uh, lights at Powerhouse Bridge is an, ad an addition. We can just cover that in select board issues and concerns, I think. Uh, Technical assistance program is an addition. From the posted, the original posted. Yes. Yes. A northern border. Grant signature. Hold on. Uh, and the northern border's grant signature, yes. But Northern Borders Grant Signature and the EDA, or just Northern Borders? No, EDA we haven't applied for yet. Wasn't you know. that on the original agenda, actually on Northern Borders, or was that a different? It's it was a same. different issue. I think it was the same. It was a Northern Border Update, Next Steps, and Monthly Contract. Is that one? Oh, yeah. Okay, well, that is implied, but that's okay. Well, so we'll just add this signature. Okay, yeah. Um, Okay, review orders. I'm in the process of going through orders. I just wanted to confirm. Oh, there it is. It doesn't look any different. It doesn't look different. Um, I think that there might. I just need to, I need to look through these more. Um, I have a question about the coding that they're falling into the like flood code. I think it's 53.7, not 57, yeah. and there's one, like the alliance. Maybe it's the comment that's wrong. Something's wrong here anyway, is my point. So, more to come on that. I'm not sure. Here, I think that's what it's right. There's comments that say flood maintenance, and maybe it's the comment that's wrong. It's starting me off. Because the alliance comes twice a year, so that's what that. Um, while we're looking at that, consider approving minutes from October 16th and 23rd. Move to approve. Second? Is there a second out there? I'll second. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Ayes have it. Issues and concerns. Does anyone have any? Um, I just I'll give you a, a, um, a heads up. It's not really an issue or a concern for me, anyway. Um, this Wednesday, the town of St. George requested a Zoom meeting regarding the interlocal contract for assessor services, which is going to be, I think, 11 o'clock on Wednesday. I plan to attend. Um, and can report back whatever we find out as a result of that. Uh, Beth has updated spreadsheets for you to take that um, in your folder design. Okay. If you could grab that okay. before you go. We have them in email? Uh, I don't know if I emailed it yet. I just printed it for tonight. Get to the top of You've got it electronically, though, yeah. obviously. Yeah. Could you? Send, send me a copy. Definitely. Okay, the other issues and concerns, I'll let Tom finish his note, but the other issues and concerns is that the Powerhouse Bridge is lit. 
Uh, at a prior meeting, we said we didn't have an issue with it being lit. It's lit way more than I thought it was going to be, but it's lit. Uh, anything else about the powerhouse bridge? Powerhouse bridge? Oh, um, in page 25 of the packet, um, Eric suggested to cover the uh, Johnson Works covered the LED bulbs from the CFLs and. Um, Wait, say that again. So Johnson Works donated new light bulbs for the cover for the powerhouse bridge, and these um, once they have a fixed tariff of $100 a year, 25 for Q4 of 2023, and $100 billed annually uh, starting January 2024 um, to keep those lights on. Are those lights um, photosensitive? I don't know. They go off during the day, Jason? I think they are. I think they do shut oh, off. Yeah. We went there today and they went on. They yeah. did. They went to put them yeah. You mean they shut off? Yeah, they yeah. shut off. Yeah, yeah, they weren't on today when we walked through the bridge and took a look yeah. at that. And down mm -hmm. Is there, is there a, there's a lighting, is there a lighting tariff that this, is based on under the electric department? Yeah, street lights, yeah. But it's based on water. Well, they, they offer an yeah. email. Yeah, so I guess what I'm wondering is his proposal is a hundred dollars annual I'm wondering, is that based on actual approved tariff of the village? We agreed to the hundred dollars at our at a prior meeting, like a meeting or two ago. We did. Yes. Yeah. Well, my 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 comment or question is. You may not have been here. There's a tariff um, for streetlights, and if it's not an approved tariff, the hundred dollars is not really an approved amount. So my suggestion would be we, we would pay whatever the approved tariff is. Got it. Is that ours or the village's? Like the, village's? The, village, the village is an electric department, has to have a tariff for rates for every class of customers. Streetlights is a class of customer. I understand what you're saying, but if they told us it's going to be $100 and that's what they're billing us, that's for them to figure out, not us, I think. Is that true? Yeah. Well, if they submitted, if they classified me as a commercial customer for my residential account, I would be making the same comment that it's not the approved tariff. So I think we are a customer, um, and therefore we have a right to question the billed tariff. I understand, but we already we previously agreed the amount based on prior bills. I understand what you're saying, but like we're questioning something we previously approved. That's why we approved. You may not have been here for that meeting, but a meeting or two ago, we approved uh, the lights up to $100. Don't remember. Uh, you probably weren't here. You, you probably weren't here issue. because yeah. you. Yeah. No, I think I think I was here when we discussed lights on the bridge. I think you raised the question of whether or not we even needed lights on the bridge. <clears throat> Still raising that question. If I but, uh, correctly, but. I'm fine with just paying the bill. Um, I believe it would be on the utility. Well, if we believe them, it's less than it would be if we were to go with their actual tariff rate. I don't think it's less. They told us what the bill would be, and it was just under 100. Well, in the letter it says much reduced to fix tariff. Much reduced. The village also is going to enact a much reduced fixed tariff of $100 a year. Okay, but they provided a, like we looked at what we put <coughs> last year and it was less than $100. So unless they've significantly in their bill to us. I don't care about that. How many light bulbs are there? I don't know. 
Two big. light bulbs? Two smaller ones, and there was two bigger ones, but I don't know what ones are the ones that are going to be lit up now. Uh, I, I don't care to squabble over $100. I'm comfortable with it. But I would also be comfortable with Duncan's proposal. What was Duncan's proposal? My yeah. proposal was we pay the tariff rate. If there's a tariff rate that says it's 100 bucks, I'm fine with paying that as a tariff rate. My, my only comment is it's two, two, two LED light bulbs, 12 hours a day, would not hurt $10 a month. But I don't care. Okay. $100. It might. I think that you know their desire is not to meter it. Right. Which I, you know, I certainly understand the idea of not wanting to meet it. Do we have an action item here at that? No. It's below our procurement policy. I think we're good. Um, are there any other issues or concerns? Okay, plan purchases, greater, serv greater service manual. So an update from last meeting. On page four. I can answer questions if someone desires that too. Have you committed that manual to memory? <laughs> yeah, got it, yeah. As far uh, as how much was it total? Yeah. The total for the manual. Fifteen hundred bucks. Fifteen hundred bucks. I thought it was like seventeen hundred. Yeah, it's, it's it's more than fifteen. It's I can pull it up just a second. You're testing my memory, Mark. I am old. I'm not young like you. I just, I'm, I'm aghast that you're just letting this money go away for what seems like something you should be able to do. Did I make a motion yet? Download it on my phone. <coughs> sure, when you pay the 1500 bucks, that's all you're going to get is a USB thumbstick. Is that really all you're going to get? Nah. That's not funny. And okay, we should be serious because we need to keep moving. So, like, what is the question? Are there any questions? What are the questions? It irks me to have to pay it, but I'll make a motion to approve the purchase of the um, cat manual. Service manual. Service manual. We have a motion. Do we have a second? second. It irks me to second. Okay, well, too late. Shane did, so you're off the hook, Kevin. I'm off the hook. Uh, any other discussion or questions? It seems like a vote no. Is there any other town with this same grader? Yes. Could we share a manual? Would you like to share a manual? Is it a well, paper manual or an electronic it's a, manual? It's a big paper manual book. The only question I had, when I talked to Tom, every piece of equipment that we've ever had, we've had we've bought a manual for. Coyote tractor, everything has a manual so we can service it in-house to save the $181 an hour when they're there. Their travel time too. They can charge for that from the time they leave to the time they get back to the shop. It's one hundred and thirty-one dollars an hour plus four dollars a mile. I'm in favor of owning the manual. Four dollars. I just wonder if Hyde Park has one. Hyde Park doesn't have one. Uh, Cambridge is getting a new grader, so they'll. Stowe's Stow got a one for. Stowe's got an older one. I don't know what has changed from the time that they've had theirs. Theirs is four, four years old, five years old. Well, when we sell this grader, yeah, we, we can charge for the manual. I mean, we'll withhold it for a year first. <laughs> right, yes. Okay. <laughs> then we'll sell it at a reduced rate. Might be we have a motion and a second on this article, don't we? Yeah, yeah, we're in discussion. Is there any more discussion? Cambridge, at some point you may. They might be interested in knowing if, I mean, I can reach out to Eric and tell them that we have the manual. They might be interested if we photocopy every page, they pay half or something. We can't do that. There's cop. No, we're not going to do that. We're copyright well, I, issues. I thought that there was a class action suit against Cat and John Deere for holding proprietary and non-proprietary information for the maintenance of the equipment. Yeah, okay, so you're going to call them and argue it and get a manual? I wouldn't mind if Cambridge paid 50 50 or something. If they wanted a copy, I'd give them a copy. <coughs> Well, I think you better know what you're talking about if we're going to do that. Tom, um, did, um, did the legislature pass the a freedom to farm thing? Slim. What? Did not legislature pass a freedom to farm thing? Not that I'm aware of. Okay. 
because some legislators. It'd be hard to argue that a grader is a tractor. But, but it's still equipment that you should have a right <coughs> to repair. Right. You're just withholding information and holding the warranty hostage. I agree. I, as I said, it irks me to have to pay. You know, I, I could see having to buy a, a manual, but you know, 17, 1800 bucks seems like a lot of money. For the service manual. For when, well, when we paid what we paid for the grader, it was almost that. Next, it was a next time you deal. buy a grader, make sure the manual is included. That actually is true. We should be asking for all heavy The crappy thing is, it gets financed for five years, though. Yeah, I mean, if you guys want to do that, I can do that. Next time. Just ask yeah. after you've sealed the bid. Like, once they agree to the terms, <laughs> be like, oh, yeah, and we want a manual. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. Okay, uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Did you vote, Duncan? Did I did. I, I said all right. I made the motion. <laughs> well, as we know from Mike Dunham, that does not always mean that you it. Uh Okay, uh, next up is the clerk, clerk report, report, unless there's any other plan for this is doing this. Is that everything? Yeah, okay. Clerk report. Rosemary, you got anything? That's a special um, the special status report is in your um, packet. Yep. Do um, you want to have it at all? Or? Let's take a look. Under your computer, Duncan. Duncan. That's correct, you right? Yep. <coughs> <coughs> of our state highway money. And the current use program has been all that, that money, the pilot money we received. And we received the A and R pilot money. So our total revenue is actually ninety one percent already. Doesn't that seem hard? That's because oh, the tax tax there tax 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 and you have job. received our yes. large payment for law enforcement for the year. Our large payment from law enforcement? Law enforcement for feeding people food. Yeah. That's it's really putting the books in the, in the black, isn't it? It's gone down from years ago. Yeah, what is it? Redoubled. Sorry, what was it now? It's 5,000 still? Or less? And I think it's around 4,000. It's a really good ROI. You've got to get them posted up on the ROI stream. They are there. all over the place. I don't just think they're good. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll create a line graph for that. <laughs> okay. I'm not kidding. <laughs> Wait, are you laughing, but I'm not kidding. Uh, are the speed limit? The electronic speed limit signs on either an end of the village, are they maintained by the state? No. Yeah. Yeah. They're maintained by the town. Yeah. Yeah, we paid to fix them two years ago. The one, the one coming into the village from, from the east is stopped working yet. Yeah, it hasn't been for quite a while. So. Is there somebody that we can? I had talked to Carl about it, but he said that he was having a tough time finding somebody to work on that sign during the flood because everybody was so busy. So we can reach out again. Is that anything that other people think we are? I think they're useful. I think they, I think they help slow traffic down. 
Yeah, Larry <coughs> the contracts over the he's the one who organized the they come back and in Friday. So they'll be signed. Gotcha. Um there's a lot of things that were like way more than twenty five percent spend over, which seem like regular expenses. <coughs> Such as like <coughs> So we budget, it sounds like we still, and that's all under that same GL code. Yes. So it sounds like we under budgeted on that one. And then the general insurance is paid twice a year? Yeah. Okay, that one's okay then. Um, Worcester mileage, that's fine. Um, we need to budget something for that next time. Electricity at the Holcomb House is 43% spent. That's pretty high. This is not high. Right. And also, same with water and sewer. Those are both high. Cemetery mowing is high. Hopefully we don't have to mow in December. Yeah, well I mean like some like that for example, I don't care because that's explainable right. easily. There's some other I skipped over like that. Like we're already at 156% of our tech service debt uh, spend. Like over, we're over budget significantly, but we've had a bunch of new hires, so that makes sense. How much of the tech, because when, when we moved upstairs, there was a big, push for, we had to get people in the phone company and the tech group to get people set up with all the new laptops and everything. We put most of that in what? Okay, so it doesn't make it off. Yeah. And I assume that's all FEMA reimbursable. And for like gymnastics, we have zero revenue, but we have, there, there is some revenue though. for gymnastics. I have not been able to get on the sports engine site to get the information down. Okay. Nine hundred dollars worth. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Cool. And there's some soccer money, and uh, they just started doing baseball. Yeah. 
Okay. And you get the money from Sports Center? Yeah. Okay. And then Skate Park. I'm just going to work through all the details of Skate Park. That one's a really small one. But yeah. It doesn't, but we usually don't try to use them in the first couple storms because nothing's really right. hardened down and we don't want to put the dirt in the new ditches. <laughs> it's a pretty fancy leaf blower we've there. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Alright, we're going to talk about the leaf blower. I'm not the leaves on my lawn, if you recall. <laughs> uh, okay, cool. You got anything else? Uh, I don't. Okay. Uh, errors and admissions uh, certificate for the shed at the skate park. So we should not be approving that then? Um, 
It needs, well, we approved, we already approved the engineering, correct? The contract signed. It's, they it's, have to pay. it's in here under, you know, the check apparently yeah. has been. Yeah. Right. So the, the question is, if they got a bill for it, are they going to pay it? Or should we pay it? Or should we put a hold on it? So my understanding is it looks like we pay it and then we, we get reimbursed for it. So we bill them? But like we already have the contract with Mumley. Mumley did the work. So somebody has to pay that. Right. So we yeah. need to bill them too. So that's like Mom, we like, need to board, bill the electric company for that previous invoice and this one. I think we actually we get reimbursement. I think we, yeah, I think we just track the funds and then we put out reimbursement to the because this to the grant, um, the DDC grant. And what is the, the turnaround of that money coming back? We don't know. That's why we need to sit down, regroup, and like John. I think his name is Jonathan at Vermont Electric Co-op. Us and then get somebody from the state who administers the grant to just where are we? Because they don't, Electric Co op doesn't know, I'm new, and so we need to figure out this. I mean, just to prevent those future cash flow issues that we've been talking about. Yeah, uh, yeah. The messaging for the, for the state is we need reimbursement quickly. Yep. My goal is at that meeting to break it into chunks to say we could have like preliminary reimbursement. Phase one, phase two. So if we can phase it out, so we're only spending out, say, fifty thousand dollars at a time, and then reimbursing fifty thousand, so that way it doesn't hurt our cash flows as bad as doing. Can the we just get on demand instead of doing chunks? Good luck. Yeah, mm -hmm. I don't. I don't. Maybe monthly, maybe quarterly. I mean, it, I, I don't think that would work. That would be really hard on their end to track. Um, I think they're going. They're yeah. going to say use of it a bill will will reimburse. That's what I, yeah, but we would submit a bill. We'd submit a bill when we get invoiced. That's why I asked the question. I wanted to know if he had figured out who to submit the request for reimbursement to yet. Yeah. There's, there is a plan. There's a plan. He's working on a plan. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. But I'm still saying that if we're going to submit a bill, why wouldn't we do it on demand? Right, that's what you said good luck about? Oh, I thought, I thought you were saying could we get a you know, like a, an advance on. No. Yeah. No. On yeah. demand. Uh, it's on demand. Like we get. Like, like this. Like we pay a bill, we put submitted invoices. Yes. Yeah. Because, because when we're talking about cash flow, because if the state wouldn't be willing to do that, I would say, well, we've been talking with the treasurer's office, and they understand the flooded entity's need for cash, and we would really appreciate yeah. the continuous flow of cash. I mean, uh, as. When I meet, um, we'll make it as fast as possible. That makes sense. And then typically, state grants have a reimbursement form, and you write down a series of invoices that add up, like monthly and quarterly, or at the end of the grant. I've never done one that was in real time with each invoice, but if they're willing to do it, we should do it. Yeah. Monthly would be fine. Yeah. Get as much as you can as quickly. I, I think that's. Well, he's that's probably not going to submit an invoice any more than once a month anyway, so I I agree with you. We should submit a request for reimbursement as soon as we get an invoice from in pay. N normally, when you get a reimbursement, they're going to want to see the check number. You have a copy of the check. You're going to cancel the check. So that would be sort of the trigger mechanism for them to pay. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, but So basically, you, Rosemary, would be the trigger for us to submit the state. Do you, what are your thoughts? You look like you're thinking of something. You know, once construction is started, that's when the real practical problem is. Those may be a couple hundred thousand dollars. That's all. Yeah. And we don't have that kind of money to pay that bill. It's a small bill. Okay. Right. Makes sense. Okay. Tom, you'll feel you'll feel us in after your discussion. Yeah. Cool. Um, if it makes sense, just to email and CC Rosemary. That's fine too. Cool. Okay. Cool. Um, so, Arizona Insurance, good agreement with Dale Percy. Is there any reason for contract negotiation aspect of this to go into executive sessions? Um, I think it's already been discussed in public meeting. What, what is, I, I missed what the, 
You were so quiet, I didn't hear what you said. What's I said, the is there a reason to go into uh, the Dale Percy? Is there a reason oh, to go into executive session? Okay. <clears throat> and Tom said no. Okay. Is there a reason to go into executive session? Do you have the most current one in the packet? Yep, page okay. seven. I updated the packet for tonight. Okay. What was the line of change? So um, I'm going to blame me, and my, I misunderstood a phone conversation. It was the town of Johnson agrees to purchase the same equal quantity back. So let's say we bring over a thousand yards, we buy a thousand yards, but uh, the agreement was we'll buy that amount of credit. So if we bring over a thousand dollars worth, we're going to buy at least a thousand dollars worth of stone back. So it rec recognizes the credit. Basically. Right, exactly, yep. That's in that fifth paragraph down. So under this agreement, are we, it doesn't change our normal agreement with Bert. We're, we're just tracking the number of yards and we'll cut a check to Bert. Yep. Right. On page, um, I did like some brief. Uh, right before I left, come here on page 10. There's like some quick math to show what NATO charges, what Manoush charges, and the difference. We, if we sell at six dollars a yard, we have about a four dollar savings towards NATO product, the NATO pit products from Del Pershing. And so it saves a lot on stone, but uh, sand is a break even. The only benefit is that it's closer. And it cleans up. It really puts the we put the pit to bed um, and just finish that project, close it out, close out Misha and designate it as a fill location for Jason now to have when he does his ditchings, he has a designated spot or if he doesn't have somebody, he automatically has, he doesn't have to change his workflow and find a place to put the pit material. Especially to compromise this material. Not if the hole's deep enough for the Japanese not being in the wild person. It's going to be deep enough where it's not going to bother once we get back up to the surface. The only comment I have is that there's, not, there's nothing about term of the agreement, meaning... Yeah, we discussed that on the phone that we didn't want a term because uh, like that. If we put a term on it, then it puts pressure on the highway guys to get it out. Or if we put the term on it, then we're under pressure to take it by back. But if we leave it open, we're just going until the pit is exhausted. That's the goal is to exhaust the pit um, with this with this agreement. Because Chip wanted us to not to interrupt, but Chip wanted us to bring it in the spring, and I said I'd like to bring it this fall as much as we can because we have time this fall. But in the spring, we're doing. Spring maintenance, maybe mud season, we don't know, and then start rain ditching. But I don't want to be tied into having to get it to them then. So we're just going to. But that's not what I mean by it. Like, I don't mean term, meaning like either of these specific times that you'd have to deliver, they'd have to receive. I mean term, meaning this contract expires on January 2025 uh, and it will auto renew without. 60-day notice, that kind of a thing, because that puts us in a position where we can renegotiate rate if the material costs change significantly. So um, I asked the same exact question. Yeah, directly, I mean, and, and I think the answer is there's not enough gravel in there to warrant a, a term contract. It's my my question again to 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 Tom today was. Are we going to go into multiple budget years with this? And I think the answer is no. No, I'll, but, we'll have it done before July. Yeah. Okay. And so my other question was, do we have enough money in the current budget to cover that cost? And the answer again was, yes, we should have. Yeah. Cover that cost? So Just in fuel? No, no, the the actual so we have a we have a line item gravel 
and we have a line in them sand, right. winter sand. And so, Yeah. So that was my question: Is are we going to? Is that going to go against the current year's sand? But it wouldn't be money out of pocket. Well, it would because the, we'd be paying the difference between the credit and the purchase price. Only, only for what we got over the credit. We're only obligated under this to purchase a dollar amount that we're credited at a dollar amount. It's not ton for ton. The only thing that we have to pay that has to come out is two dollars a year. Right. It has to go two dollars a year for the material, and, and then the other stuff's just getting cool. like two for one loads, so it's no cost really there. It's just a, we got to pay for it, and there's money in the gravel line and do that for the at the most. And, and you're estimating that there's a total of ten thousand yards, yeah. maybe. Me and Chip looked at it, and with the ledge at where it is, it, it was anywhere from seventy-five hundred to maybe eleven thousand at the most. So we figured we said we both said ten thousand yards was a very accurate rough number. Yeah. We obviously no one knows because right. how long that leg goes, yeah. So I, I I think the answer to your question is it it isn't gonna go multiple years. It's it, it's it, so ter the term of contract probably is immaterial. I, but I, I definitely have the same question concern that you did. And if you know if we we're talking forty, fifty thousand yards of material, I would completely agree that we should have the ability to look at that price and you know on an annual basis. But I just I don't think it's going to happen. Okay. Are okay. any of the other dirt people around consulted to see if they would be interested? As far as like crushing? No, maybe Nick's interested in a deal like this, but gonna pay a dollar more a ton or Minaj, is that who you're somebody talking about when you say Nick? Else is offering. I just I'm wondering if the question was asked or was this a, a one company conversation? It was not a, so much a one company conversation, but location was a big decider and this for the main thing is because we we're going to have to truck it. Right, but like when we're driving to Eden to buy winter sand, we're trucking it. There's a slight cost savings per ton, but I guess if we're driving to Eden to get sand, to get our winter sand anyways, there would be no cost difference if you just had it up there loaded versus unloaded, right? I mean, there would be, the cost difference would be we'd be loaded going uphill, so it would use. Because right now we use seventeen dollars eighty six cents per load of winter sand hauled from Menage. That's a diesel fuel to our piston fuel per load going to Menage the way we do. So if we were going up loaded, obviously that's going to change the fuel consumption pretty drastically. It would. Depends on if they're interested, I guess, and how interested. It's just a question. Okay, what are we doing? Do you want terms? No, it's fine. I would move to approve the language as submitted. <clears throat> and we should authorize somebody to sign it too. You want to have Tom sign it or you want to sign it? I have a paper right here. It doesn't matter to me. So I move okay. to approve and have that sign. But I don't care how it signs it. Okay, go ahead. Just think about that. Go for it. I have pen ready. I'll second what you just said. My, my original motion was to have Beth sign it, to approve the contract and have Beth sign it. Second. second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? I guess I'll go with aye. <laughs> Instead of nay. Consider it signed. Where's my pen, Duncan? I'm glad you I guys have, think I, it's I, I got one more Steve. sign. Uh, one more Steve. sign. I know. Stealing my pen. Oh, I did sign it. I guess I'm good. Uh, Here you go. Well, thank you. Chips on Big right now. Rosemary Key. Can you sign that? And I'll put it signed back in here with the others. Um, dilapidated buildings. Yep. Dilapidated buildings on Fallout on Stern Street property. 
So, Dean, do you want to give us an update? Um, yeah, uh, the email I sent, um, last conversation I had with uh, uh, Chris, the gentleman that uh, is overseeing the property on 100C, the burnt out building there, uh, I can't recall exactly the address. Um, I had given him a deadline, uh, and the deadline uh, was up at the end of uh, July. I've given them the deadline by email and by phone. Um, I tried to follow up. I saw on, on the 13th of July, uh, uh, 13th of June, he had actually brought down a skid steer and started trying to go through stuff. Uh, he worked on it for maybe, I would say, about a week or so. Um, small improvements. After that, uh, honestly, when the flood came along, I really didn't follow back up. Uh, I have tried to reach out uh, several more times by phone and by email, so I haven't got any response. The last response I did get from him when I told him, of course, you know, he was going to have a deadline, there was going to be fines involved. He wanted me to, he had me send the ordinance and everything so his lawyers could go over it. And there was, there was, a, there was a lot of resistance to uh, him telling me you know, his hardships and everything else, and he was trying to help out his dad. Um, but as for the last communication I had was uh, two weeks before the deadline. Uh, when the flood came along, uh, honestly, I, I didn't do, uh, I kind of lost that direction of keeping up with trying to reach out to him. and. Uh, uh, but I have tried to reconnect and have not heard back from it. Uh, I don't have an actual physical address for him. Uh, all I have is phone number and his email address. Okay. For the ordinance, what is the next step? Well, um, he was given the deadline. Um, he failed to... Um, get everything done by that deadline, so technically the deadline has passed. Yep. Um, um, so per the ordinance, uh, he would start accumulating fines uh, accordingly, and it would depend on the discussion of when we want to that timeline to have, to have started. The original, the original um, deadline was June 19th, I do believe, um, and he was very, you know, very aware of that was, that was the deadline that was placed. Um, I will say that, you know, I apologize to the board for not continuing to follow up, but when the flood happened and everything, things kind of went a little sideways, so, um, but I'd like to hear from the board to discretion. Following the the way, the way our ordinance is, um, basically he starts accumulating fines. Um, I inform him of the fines and for him to, uh, I assume, to start paying them and making restitution and letting him know that they will be accumulating. I do believe the ordinance is a, um, I do believe is a, is a daily fine the way it's set up. Yeah, I think so too. How much is it every day? Yeah. That's the one thing I do not know off the top of my head. I can't remember what we had set it at. I'll bet David's got it. It is um, an inspection fee of $50 for residential properties, $100 for commercial. Um, yeah, the penalties are first offense, uh, violation of this provision of any ordinance in order to. Uh, any order issued pursuant to sections 60 or E shall be punishable by fine no less than $200, the waiver fee in lieu of a civil penalty for any person who declines a contest of a municipal complaint or any order issued pursuant to sections above, blah, 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 blah. Offense should be $100. Second offense, sec so these accumulate, accumulate. Second offense is uh, $400, a waiver fee of $200, third offense is $600, and 
four hundred for labor. Um, offenses shall be counted on a, cal a calendar year basis. Each day a violation continues shall constitute a separate offense. Shall um, constitute a separate offense. Yeah. So box of that. And the other thing um, that I'd love to get a little direction also after this evening would be um, because, of course, I can see the property, anybody can see the property very clearly from the other side of the road or from the public roadway, you know, but um, I, I wonder if, although I need his permission to allow me to actually in, to reassess and, and do a reinspection of what's there, um, is me doing a visual inspection from the public area of the roadway acceptable to because I think that would be a good thing to have another time stamp of that being that being done and, and being part of this whole process. Um, Is that a question? Yeah, kind of like if we thought that that would be suitable, just being able to, you know, Normally, I would inspect by getting the getting the property owner to give me permission. We would go on to the property. I would do a full walk around and follow the whole process of the inspection. But I can't really do that from without getting his permission to enter on the property. I didn't so for um, basically section four of the prohibition, it says no person no person shall fail to comply with the terms of an order issued pursuant pursuant to section six. D or E of this ordinance, inspection upon receipt of this information that a violation of this ordinance has occurred. The inspection official shall undertake a physical inspection of the premises or property. The inspection official may enter the building, structure, or premises within the town for the purpose of <coughs> inspections or investigated investigations at all reasonable hours, provided that, except in a case of emergency, the right and authority conferred by this section shall not apply to the entry of any premises or property unless written, advance written notice is served on the owner thereof in accordance with blah, blah, blah. Such written notice shall contain a statement of the date and time that an inspection will be made and shall also contain a statement of the purpose of such inspection. The inspection official shall prepare a written report of his or her inspection of the premises um, and any corrective or abatement recommendations and shall deliver the copy thereof with the owner of the premises and the town clerk or transmittal to the select board. So, like, basically this is saying that any written notice of inspection gives you permission to inspect. And my clarification question on that would be, written notice being, uh, all I have, does that mean that all I have to do is send this person, like a registered letter or, or, or an email or something like that? Do I have to actually get knowledge of the person receiving it like uh, actually like almost like registered mail where somebody has to sign for it or something does that actually or can i just utilize the communication that i have been using send that email saying this is i'm going to go inspect and this is the day i'm going to do that does that does that count as notification by written notification is the ordinance Specify return receipt. I didn't see anything where it said like you had to have proof that the person like received it or understood it or you know. It also doesn't responded. say that the sheriff like it doesn't. It also doesn't say that law enforcement needs to whatever the word is. What's the word? Serve. Serve. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't say it has to be served by a sheriff or anything like that. Um, so, I mean, to me, we have this property owner's information. We have a, we have a mailing address because we send tax bills to a mailing yeah. address. And we should be sending certified mail to that mailing address informing of a property inspection. Okay. But the thing is, we've already done a property yeah. inspection. So, things have not changed significantly enough, no. I don't think, to warrant a second inspection. Okay. So I would recommend we follow the next steps in this ordinance and um, send a certified letter stating that we'll hold a hearing. Okay. We should hold it before our next select board meeting. Before? Well, like the same night? <laughs> Not more meetings. 
Not more, not additional nights. It's not nights. Same Because I don't want to have additional nights either. We have enough yeah. additional nights. Um, but serve a written notice of a hearing. Okay. And then we can. I mean, the ordinance spells out what our steps are. Yeah. 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 I just wanted to confer. I guess. I think David had his yeah. hand up a minute ago, but. David. I just want to point out that the party in interest is the owner, not the owner's son. So, and I think you alluded to that, I don't know. Yeah. So I'm sure that uh, the young man who has been on site uh, will be very hard to find at this point. And, uh, but he, he does not have an interest. Uh, indeed, an interest is with his father, and that's where the notice has to go. We need to be responsive when we get that prompt response. Uh, but yeah, we need to serve the property owner, the okay. property owner's responsibility. Okay. And if there's any yes. other, like if there's any other accommodations in place, like an estate, somebody responsible yeah. for a state, then that is part of the paperwork they should be providing. But it still goes to the property owner. They're still the person on file. Well, okay. that does trigger a question for me. The deadline of June. 19th. 19th, sorry. Was yeah. that coordinated with the property owner? Or no, that was coordinated with the okay. son. So. I have not personally ever spoken that's, with the property that's owner. That's fine. We have yeah. a place where we send the tax bill. Yep. I think. But you notify the property owner. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, I, the property owner or the property owner's son? I'm talking to the. To the property owner, son, the property owner initially, in the very like the was, very beginning of this yeah, process, so and was, also um, somebody that was working with I don't know whether it was a realtor or an insurance person that was that was kind of a middleman kind of connection. I, but yeah, I think for clarity, I mean, people will, correspondence. people will yeah. correct me if I'm wrong. It needs to be with the property owner. Okay. Yes. It doesn't matter. Like if if we corresponded the town with somebody who is not the property owner and set a deadline for June nineteenth, mm -hmm. that is not binding. A letter needs to be sent to the property owner. If we need to pick another deadline to continue on the course of the ordinance to get to the point where fines can be written, it just needs to go to the right person. So Dean, did the notice of June nineteenth go to the property owner? No, it did not. It went with the person okay. that I've been so I say that we pick another deadline of November 19th and send it through the proper channels at that point. Continue on in the ordinance. If it comes down to fines, it comes down to fines. Dean, can I ask yeah. a question? Has what has officially been sent out to the owner of record at this point in time? Has has somebody received a notice of violation or? No, no, the only, again, I was steered towards speaking with the son because the son was the person that was locally due to the father and due to his, the, at the time, with health conditions that compromised him. The, I was directed to work with the son because the son was in Vermont, the father was the father, and the owner is not uh, at that time, as far as I know, is still not returned to Vermont or the state. They can provide uh, yeah. power of attorney or some sort of legal document that transfers Transfer. communication to the son, but the town has no interest in communicating with the son. Okay. And I think, in terms of enforcement, I don't remember the ordinance well. I do remember having some serious concerns about. The fact that there were two mechanisms to assign penalties, and we had the attorney look at it and he said it was okay. <clears throat> it leaves me, it leaves a big question in my mind, <clears throat> which avenue do we go through for enforcement? Do we go the civil penalty, or do we go with the Municipal Ordinance Bureau type penalty, which is another question. Have you, have you received your authorization from that? 
municipal ordinance bureau and do you have an issuing are you an official issuing person you can't be because we haven't i have not received yeah that. so that needs to be done so civil penalty it is well maybe but civil penalty is not an easy process to go through it means you have to go to court yeah. it's very Basically. hard to enforce yeah and i i wouldn't really think that that's the best route to go my my point is I, if Dean needs to sit down and spend a few minutes of time with our town attorney, we need to do this right. You know, we need to get get it right. Um, if I remember correctly, once you did your inspection, then a notice could be sent to the property owner of these are the things that are not in conformance. Mm -hmm. um, if that hasn't been done, that needs to be done, mm -hmm. um, and we need to start an official process of enforcement against the property owner. Okay, so all communication needs to be written. You can have verbal, but it has to be followed up with written, and it mm -hmm. has to go to the property <clears throat> owner. Okay. And to the property owner mailing address on record with the town clerk, mm -hmm. very specifically. And if that address changes, they need to notify the town, the town clerk. They need to notify Rosemary in office. Um, and also, I would recommend we actually go through the league and try to get the league's help in supporting um, getting you certified. It's certified, it's not going yeah. through the league, is it? It's not, it's not a league issue. There's a form mm -hmm. um, that needs to be filled out and signed by who's, us. Who's it through? Like, uh, it's the it Municipal from? Ordinance Bureau of the State of Vermont. So there's a form that has to be, we have to certify as nominating or, or designating Dean as an issuing official. He gotcha. will then get a book, an ordinance, a ticket book, and a number. Um, and any time he issues a ticket, he has to write that. That, that was supposed to have been done a, a while ago, and I've been trying to backtrack to see if it had ever been done. It was originally because of because uh, I had I was given books for ACO, and I was and I was been trying to track down if that if that don't, form don't had ever been done. Don't spend time doing that. Let's just redo it. Okay. Let's assume it wasn't okay. done, and let's let's redo it. Um, well, if he was an issuing official, we can find out real easy. Uh, yes. There is a number. It, it, yeah. But there, but I don't think there's. But I don't think he's been issued a number. So we need to get we need to get the form. Yes. We need to sign it and get him. We've never done anything about, like that in the Slack okay. meeting, not that I remember. It was like way back in Brian. So what board? <laughs> you know, yeah. like which Slack board? Was it before Evan and I was on? We're on. No, because he was no. in. No. no. That's what I mean. No. Like okay. I don't think I don't think this has happened. Okay. Point. All right. So well, we should also if we have constables who are issuing my understanding is nobody's issued any tickets we haven't been able to because i, I well <laughs> i was the told that long ago that i even knew there were ticket books and yeah. then i found out that i need a i need a number yeah so I so my one. point is yeah. we should probably also have bj and our other animal control officer um, be listed as issuing officials as well and i think you can do it all on the same form if i remember correctly but they would each get a unique ID number, mutual and official number. So many numbers. Sounds like the process is starting back over, Dave. Sorry? Huh? Sounds like the process is starting back over. Um, I would have to look at the ordinance. I do not have it in front of me at this point, but I think, I think you, a number of you have made a very good point that this is a learning experience for for this community and for this town officer, it hasn't been done before. Uh, and when you're in that situation, it's highly likely that you're going to miss some dates, you're going to stumble over some notices and things of that nature. Um, but at the end of this process, when you go to work on the property next door, <laughs> Hopefully we'll know how to do it right. Yep. Not too far down the road. And, uh, Take notes, Dean. Oh, yeah. And, and I, I want to add one footnote to this. Uh, I'm, I'm happy to be helpful 
I'm not going to give anybody any legal advice. Uh, I'm not insured for it anymore. And, uh, you know, if something goes wrong and you're acting according to something that I told you, uh, sometimes my wallet is more attractive than the town's wallet. So, uh, I'll, uh, well, I'll look after myself and look after yourselves and uh, let's get, uh, it's, it's, it's something that needs to be done, something that needs to be learned. Maybe, maybe Dean and Tom can work together. The municipal, there, there is a handbook on municipal ordinance enforcement. Yeah. Um, it's, it's not rocket science. I've been through this process before, and like there's, there's help available. Yeah. But it's, to Evan's point, you really have to start at square one. You have to pretend nothing happened and start all over again. I, I think so. Yeah. That's okay. We're in good position. We're going to be good at this in 2025. Um, and we do need housing, so it'd be great if we free up some of our housing that is sitting, no rotting, not doing anything, and encourage people to have housing that is livable. That one's probably past to past home. I just need to, yeah, I know, right? I just need to Unless you want to just start with a cellar home. So, from here, <clears throat> Where do we go? Are you going to do some research? So Dean, you're going to, you and Tom work together to get connected with the Municipal Ordinance Bureau. Mm -hmm. The mob, if you will. Hmm. Yep, right. the mob. And <laughs> Tom will Don't bring make me an offer? back to us. And in the meantime, you can start with that certification of notification on yeah. a specific deadline and just follow the steps make sure we're talking to our legal entity, and I assume when you connect with the mob, they'll have advice in this too. Uh, Should we make sure that, so under our, under the dilapidated buildings ordinance, there are people assigned to enforce. Is constable one of those, constable or health officer, one of those listed officials? Uh, no. When Dean and I sit down and go, we'll probably go paragraph by paragraph through the ordinance, because he's going to have to cite all the violations and everything. We yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm aware of that. I'm just, I, I don't want to have him do something As only to find out term, inspection he official, and The inspection official means town health officer, assistant health officer, and other and such other persons so designated and appointed by the select board from time to time to enforce and execute enforce or execute the provisions of this ordinance. So you are a health officer. So I think he's a designated official, so yes. we should be okay. Beautiful. Thank you for the update. And if, if need be, we could designate him tonight as a as a person, but since he is he's a health, there. Officer, yep. health officer. You're a designated health officer. I have one extra thing to add that goes into the dilapidated building uh, um, overhead is um, is wondering if this will come into play with several of our properties that are abandoned slash flooded and when uh, we should start moving forward with, with those as well. And if, the, if we feel like the dilapidated building would be the way to go to manage those. I talked to uh, the state, uh, my contact for health officer, and they gave me the, the suggestion that going to the dilapidated building ordinance would be the way to manage those flooded, abandoned properties for, uh, you know, for health reasons and for, for just standard managing them. So, just putting that out there to um, appreciate it because that was a follow up you were going to take away last time. Yeah, I appreciate that. My initial reaction to that, which is not that of the board, it's just mine, is we have a handful of other properties that have long been on a dilapidated list uh, that unless there's a good reason not to address those first, I would personally prefer to address those first uh, for a lot of reasons. Okay. I agree. Just throw out their question. Um, have you talked with Scott at all? I imagine, do you have an inventory of abandoned places during yeah. the flood? You don't? Yeah. Okay. No waiting. Gotcha. Yeah. Well, 
Scott's a good time. resource. Yeah, just on the note, because I've actually looked at some consideration, because we do have one house that has not been vetted, yeah. that is festering. Um, it's a health issue. Yeah. But when you have a state buyout and a FEMA buyout, they're involved, they have their up to two year process that includes demolition of the building through them. So if you pre sort of hop in the middle of that process, I don't know how that pans out. So that's a FEMA state question. Not so much a local question. But it gets pretty close to the line if the if the house itself starts becoming a public health hazard and start causing Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I fully yeah. agree. And with that notification, um, going through the process of FEMA, letting them know that there's a few buildings that haven't been cleaned, and they're going to be, they are going to be a nuisance for public health, yeah. they may fast track that. But again, it's a few mistakes. And what, and I don't know what building you're talking about, but one of them is on that list. Yeah. On the bio list. Yeah. Okay. And I, I would normally absolutely agree with you 100%, but I think my only caveat to your notion is if one of those flood-related houses does present a health hazard to the general public, that that should be prioritized. Yep, that's why I said it, unless there's a good reason. Yeah. Yep. And that would be a good reason. Yep. Definitely constitutes. Thank you. Dean, anything else on dilapidated? Uh, no. Dean, yeah. you can stay for the rest. <laughs> you can stay for the rest of the meeting. He said you can stay for the rest of the meeting if you'd like. May I, really? <laughs> <laughs> Only if you want to. He always seems to get up well, after, I, the, after this section. There's a stoical and there's an answer to you on that question. I have to answer to my wife. <laughs> 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 no contest. That's, that's a very power. higher power. <laughs> okay, field contracts. Contracts from the fuel bid process. What? Chat. Uh, did you skip one? Did we do buyout update in discussion? Oh, oh, oh. Did we give what? Buyout update in discussion. Oh, buyout update. Oh, Are we just mixing that? No, so, we're not mixing yeah. Um. Okay. So we received some FEMA documentation. And FEMA documentation and it's going to be a little bit different. Oh. Um, so we received FEMA documentation for consideration in the buyout process that I forwarded the select board earlier today. You did? Yes. Um, oh, that's just the handbook? It's the handbook with a second attachment. Uh, I didn't find either particularly helpful, frankly. Um, and we, the state did reach out to people on the buyout list. Okay, I shouldn't say I didn't find either helpful. The guide, the handbook or guidebook, whatever they called it, from FEMA was helpful in defining what the process was. It was not particularly helpful in guidance around considerations for buyouts from a municipality perspective, which is what I was hoping for. Um, hoping for something a little bit more along those lines. But there was a little bit of reference to things to consider of that nature. Um, we should all familiarize ourselves with it as, you know, engaging as that documentation really is. Uh, it'd be good to look through and really just understand the process. But also, additionally, around buyouts, um, the state, the Vermont Emergency Emergency management did reach out to people on the buyout list. The majority of folks did respond and say and tell us that they were happy for us to discuss their property specifically in open meeting. Um, not everyone on that list reached out. Um, so <coughs> I intend to do this before the meeting, but I apologize, I did not have time. Um, so I will share the properties that are on the list that were that gave approval for buyout, um, and it is the majority. So you'll have those locations, and I'll omit the ones that did not give specific permission. And are you 
you going to read that to us right now, or are you going to email it to us? I'm going to email it. Okay. Have you been emailing Scott, too? Or? Uh, no, but I will. I'll include you in that, that list that will be public. Um, I don't really think this is a item that Ron needs to be involved with, but he's our FEMA representative. Do we copy him? He's part of it. He's the one who provided the documents. Okay. Uh, I talked to him last week about it. Um, and yeah, I'll copy him into it. Cool. Thank you for the update. You're welcome. And, and Beth, the ones that did not agree to public knowledge of it. We won't see him. It's not that they didn't agree only to Beth public will, knowledge. Only Beth will see it. Tom and I have the list. Tom might not know he has the list just before I started, but it's in the TOJ administrator inbox. Congratulations. Um, yeah, until we get until we get a more formal report of submission for Maya. These people did not um, apply for a buyout. There are people who responded to a state survey asking <coughs> if you're interested in a buyout, which is not the same thing as initiating a buyout. So, the people who initiate a buyout, we should be receiving information from FEMA on people who initiate the buyout through FEMA, it's or people who formally uh, initiate a buyout process through the state and FEMA. They'll, they'll go together. My understanding is the state can help people through the buyout for FEMA. Could be wrong yeah. on that, but that's my understanding. That's what, what's her name? Stephanie Simmons. Yeah, that's what's her name. Um, but these folks on this list have only expressed an interest, which is not the same thing. Right. Um, so the actual buyout list will be public. Um, is the application deadline passed? Is there any chance that people will continue to? No, the bio application process, I forget what the duration is. It's like a year or yeah, more. It's, quite a, it's while. quite a while. It's X number of months after the flood event, and it's it, it definitely is within a year. I don't remember if it goes beyond a year or not. Okay. So, so Beth, with the with the two documents that you received from Ron, mm -hmm. I, unless I misunderstood what he was saying, it seemed to me that he was suggesting that it would be beneficial for the town to adopt a process for evaluating. These he and properties. I talked about. So I talked to him. I just laughed because, like, I just, whenever I hear FEMA I'm talking about us adopting a process. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, sorry. So, next slide now. Um, when I talked to him last week, I told him that we had the list of people who are interested in having a conversation with the state about buyout, and that when Stephanie Smith was on the phone with us, and we were talking about this internally, we decided that we needed to take away what parameters and guidelines we want to set up for ourselves in considering whether or not we would accept a buyout. Um, because it needs to be the two mutual parties. So in my conversation with Ron around that, he said, let me pull some information, and I'll send you, you know, what I have, and go from there. That's where his documents stem from. It stemmed from that conversation that he and I had around creating guidelines for us and how we want to determine whether or not we just have to buy out. And one of those documents, which I think were FEMA generated, yes. discuss the possibility or the, the concept of having an interface between the property owner and FEMA and the town picking up that responsibility. That's not one that I would be particularly um, thrilled <laughs> to, uh, we just don't have the capacity and, and you know, the other option was to hire somebody to do it, and we don't have the money. Yep, I agree, somebody. and I so. think that, um, I talked to Ron about this a little bit too, because my understanding from the first time that Carl and I talked with Stephanie is that the state was willing to help be that interface. <clears throat> Ron said in his prior experience with FEMA and individual buyouts, the state was not willing to be that interface. I think something has changed in this flood event where they are they do have that willingness to help support. Um, I think we need to confirm that. He 
he was going to follow up with Stephanie. Did you hear about from on that, actually? Um, he was, sorry, let me finish my sentence and then you can answer. He was going to follow up with, I think it was with Stephanie, but it's somebody at the state anyway, <clears throat> to confirm that they would be willing to be that liaison for us, and he was going to let us know. My understanding was that uh, the town steps back till the purchase and sale agreement is ready and that the interface, everything is directed to the BDMs now. Can't hear you. Sorry. Everything is directed, to, directed to Vermont Emergency Management, Stephanie Smith, and that the town stay out of it until accepting the property. So it's like we have no involvement until uh, we get to the purchase and sale agreement. Before that, we send it all residents and interested parties directly to the state. We have, we have no, no involvement. Mark? Uh, well, I'm just immensely curious to what the, what the town involvement would, I mean, play this out in your mind. If somebody goes through the process and wants to accept a buyout, yeah. what are we at? if we don't have a policy in place, we can't say, oh, yeah, you can go. No, you can't. You know, yeah. we either need a policy or, in my mind, if they go that far, they get it. But I, well, you know. I think that we need to, I agree with you, we have to establish guidelines. And I think we need to, I think there is some uh, helpful information actually in the FEMA documents around those guidelines such as municipalities should consider the history of flooding for that property, or does that property help mitigate um, flood events? There are some guidelines like that that I think we should be considering as part of our buyout uh, guidelines. I don't know if I just like that. Well, yeah, right now, no, and I can think of some other things that might be, that, um, is it a historic structure within the historic district of the village, or blah, blah, blah. Is it does it provide access to the river? There could be a public access. Or, yep. I mean, there could be all kinds of different things. Yeah. That could be yeah. Happen. But um, yeah, I think we. I think this is what Ron should. I mean, he's done this. He, he. Uh, I mean, again, we 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 should be making this policy. There should be one already out there for us to. I don't. I think you bring up a really good point. That why should the town say no? And I think that that's kind of what I heard you just say. It's like, what, like, do you get so far that it, the town's always going to accept it? Or like, what is the no? And that, that's kind of what I'm, I hear over here, like, a lot of reasons to accept it, you know, because of access to the river or it mitigates other properties. But I think you bring up a really good point. Like, what is, the, what, why would there ever be an example where the town would not accept a buyout? Yeah. Um, good question. I mean, they could say this is a historic building that's critical to the nature of the village, we don't want it torn up. I, you know, that that's one thing that came to my mind. There may be others, but... Will I, we decide on those on an individual basis, or is it a kind of a blanket basis of... It's individual properties. The individual properties. The property, individual property owner and the town have to both agree on the individual property. <clears throat> and the other thing for consideration, um, there actually, now that I think about it, there was actually quite a bit of information, it's just a lot of words in the FEMA, but another consideration was, are there structures on the property that are within the flood zone, or is it a parcel that doesn't have structures that flood, but the parcel floods, and if that is the case, like maybe it's not something we would want to consider. So yeah. I think there's lots of variables that we need to make sure that we are accounting for. Yeah, and in our case, there's a, another big variable, and that's the fact that the, we know the FEMA floodplain maps are badly out of date and inaccurate. Yeah. Um, so, for example, if anybody's on Railroad Street that's thinking about a buyout, they may not actually be in the flood way. But that's, that would be... That's something we can consider. Like flood history is different than flood plane, and flood maps. But that's not the only criteria that FEMA would allow for a buyout, is my understanding. And even if FEMA doesn't allow for a buyout, the state may, based on flood history. So, yeah. So I think it all points to 
Mark has a good point. We we probably do need to before we before we start actually considering whether or not we want to agree to a buyout, we probably should try and develop some. Well, yeah, that's what we talked about last criteria. meeting. So we need to definitely be thinking about it. Yeah. For me, some of this comes back to we have no zoning. People can do whatever the heck they want in this town. Well, if they do the buyout, they can't. Do I know if they do the buyout, but if they decide to not do the buyout and put a small landfill in, we don't care. Isn't there something uh, yeah, that... Yeah, within the 100-year floodplain, regardless of the map being inaccurate, there are rules. There's right. there's a very heavy rule. There's a right. major that you have to abide by. If develop. you're in the identified... Yeah, so but... Rules, but there's zone. We, we, uh, we all know that that map is what from 1987? Yes. But it doesn't change the fact that there's zones within those areas. Right. And there is a lot of overlap, I'm sure, with the list of houses we're going to see. You know. Another odd one is every property that is accepted as a buyout will affect the village too far. If they won't be collecting village taxes on that property and their grand list will drop, so the 10 cents on the grand list payment from the town will drop. But they don't, they don't get a say in this process. Well, if those are three, they'd be like five. Yeah. Yeah. You're shaking your head. Well, we, it's it's yeah, true I mean, it's, it's up to the town it's solely. It's true that the town solely approves, but to Evan's point, we should involve them in the conversations. Is that what you're saying? To be a good neighbor. I was just saying, consider stuff. I don't really want to pay Ron to develop a policy. The initial bring on with Ron was to stay in the reimbursable lane through FEMA and oversee all the flood paperwork. We seem to be getting outside of that a little bit, and that's, I think I voted for some expenditure outside of that you expense. So, I'm admitting I'm to it, but, but I'm saying, I'm like. Screaming. I don't, I don't want our relationship with Ron to be never-ending. He doesn't need to develop policy, and we're not going to see any of these for a year or two. We don't need a policy today. Scott? Yeah, so as, as a past village trustee, God, I thought I would never say that. Are you saying it with pride? You know, I have a lot of pride. Um, but we would have been interested in you know, buildings being knocked down, homes being knocked down because of loss of income on, on village tax, but also water and light, um, that all has to be dealt with. Yeah, Duncan so was saying. Water shot offs and just can't leave a tee up to a property and hope that the bacteria doesn't launch into the pipe. That's got to be cleaned up. Sewer lines. The sewer and, and You can't just leave a dead end of tee on a sewer line? The sewer line, according to the village sewer ordinance, the sewer line either has to be dug up to the to the, to the line, to back to the main, and, and are filled with concrete. Right, and that's property owner. So yeah. that's part of the reimbursable expense to the to the property owner. I would think if it's part of the if it's part of um, decommissioning the property, that would have to be part of. Yeah. What? But I mean, the village is going to get notified one way or the other. It's a nice if it came from the select board, and not from another entity or third party saying, "Oh yeah, yeah by the way, get your crews here to turn off the property." It definitely has to be. And we should be, and to the point of those, those properties that are public, we should be giving them advance notice of right. this is what's being talked about. Brian, my fellow trustee, would probably agree with him. He's denying being a former. <laughs> 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 I'm going to go down. Um, I thought you were raising your hand to volunteer to create a guideline. So. Oh, no, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> Why would we? Uh, when I mentioned Ron, Ron, I just said, "Have him find one." I don't want him to create. I don't want him to spend hours of his life creating one. There's got to be guidelines out there all over the world. Tom, Tom, he's got a text and an email from Ron. Uh, he is watching. You can wait. Um, <laughs> uh, where uh, Vans is setting up a new process where they're going to be the sub sub applicant on behalf towns to opt in, which would allow them to take on the majority of the administrative burden of, to manage the grant. 
Uh, the town would still be responsible for owning the property at the end of the process and maintaining it as open space. The MOU we're working on that outlines this process does have the town as responsible for communicating with property owners around things like scheduling the appraisal and closing. It sounds like all prior stuff with the owners. I realize it doesn't have full relevance to what you're talking about now, but fairly. But even that appraisal and what was the other thing? The closing. The even the closing and the, the appraisal, though, Stephanie said was re reimbursable expense and was something that if we needed it, we could ask for the state's assistance because they could make it a reimburse reimbursable expense on their side. The so, state, not the feds. The state. Right, yeah. We're that now. Um, so, not to be that guy, Go ahead. I think we're getting a little bit into the weeds, and maybe I did by bringing the village up as well. I think this is just like a heads up. It's just a heads up. Where You're we're going to be sending out a list of people that have said that they're okay with making their name public, and they've only filled out a form of interest to buy out. They haven't started the process. Correct. And we'll be talking about this more in future months. Yes, and and if people have feedback on um, guideline considerations, you can send them my way. I'll compile them. I just want to make sure, like, one of the properties is large enough for a walk park. <laughs> See. Okay, let's go. Uh, field contracts ready? Ready for field contracts? I'm ready. Rosemary, do you want these, or do you want Tom? Where are these going? Rosemary wants them. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, motion to authorize the TA to sign the fixed price over rack contract with Fred's for L ULSD as well as the fixed, wait, I don't know why we got separate, but we can do the fixed price. For number two, number two fuel oil. I'll second that. What? That's a good question. One, one is a fixed price over yeah, the well, rack price, and the other is a fixed price. When we talked about this last year, we wanted them both to both be rack plus. Um, I don't know if I did them different, but our overwhelming consumption. Actually, they're just about equal. That's almost yeah, saddening. That too. Well, it depends. It depends on what happens to the rack price over the course of the next year. Yeah, anybody got a future predictor fuel price? <laughs> Wait a second. Yes, yeah, We went through the same thing last year. We ended up on rack plus for both. I thought it was rack plus 20 last year, and now it's rack plus 30 this year. It seems like CES is really duping us. Okay, so you did it for both, both friends. No. Okay, uh. There's a motion that can die. Did we get a second? I don't know if anybody's I seconded it. You seconded it? Okay, any discussion? I might vote against my own motion now. What is your discussion? Well, the discussion is, are they supposed to both be rack. Rack. fixed price over rack, or is one supposed to be fixed and one supposed to be fixed over rack? I'm willing to try it this year. As motion. Okay. You're signing it if it passes. So, any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Let's have it. We're going to spend 40 grand I'm on signing two right now. this year. Thank you, Matt. You're welcome. You're welcome. Yeah, you you're welcome. Wait, no, I'm motion, I'm motion for the town administration. Yeah, that's just what I was going to say. That was my motion. It's what stands. You know what? I'm sending that one in. I'm going to sign under it. You're killing me. I'm really breaking the rules. You can counter sign if you want. I just want I would cross to, name like, out. get all these signed and, like, off the... Those are there? signed. Now, the village is going to approve, of course, so let's move on. Okay. Well, it's set up for the town to sign it. That's what I was confused about because way earlier this year we did the same thing that we did last year because the, the town uses the majority of 
diesel fuel, village is gonna let us select the contractor and we're gonna let the village select like propane because they use so much at the PPP plant. Mm -hmm. Can we get that PPP? corrected, Tom? Yeah. That's the PPP yeah. plant. I don't think we should put these out to business. It's a full processing plant. It's, it's caused more headache than I think good. Well, fine. That whole yeah. bit process. Motion to approve that, too. Okay. Um, draft budget update. Summary only. We don't like budgets. Beth, I'm going to eat all these cookies myself. You brought them in. Does we'll anybody else want a cookie that Beth brought? Pass them over. Did I hear you right? You don't like budget? No, I don't. Okay. Okay, what, what's the scoop? Speak budget. Um, let's hear it. Oh, just that um, I've met with all the subcommittees and uh, their budgets are all at 5% below for this year, projected expenses, and next year at a zero increase. Um, all right, yeah, everyone. Which is really exciting, so that the majority of the budget's already done. Um, That's not the majority. Good, good chunk. So Jason oh, and I uh, went over a bunch. Oh, lines. <laughs> and uh, we have some questions for Rosemary. We'll deal with them in the next couple of days. But uh, that's going to be done. And then I'll probably sit down um, with uh, one of the select board members just to go over the remaining section of the budget of what you want uh, me to research for the next meeting. Um, what do you want me to bring to the table for that? And you have the sheriff's department. Well, literally, yeah. everybody will have something different except that. Yeah, sure. That's, that's a, already that's on my agenda. One. Have you done okay. your graphs yet? Man. I haven't. I haven't <laughs> I like we haven't had the share. meeting. Okay, so sheriff's department, I asked Roger when the meeting's going to happen. Yes, it's the annual meeting. And he said, I don't know, haven't set it up yet. I need to do that. So let me pay One my thing testing. that I would like to have a conversation about with Roger <laughs> is setting up the contract to be somewhat similar to Is Setting up. Our contract for patrol similar to NEMS contract. You know, where, where we would own the equipment at the end. I mean, we're paying for it anyways. So if NEMS leaves, right, um, you know, and we don't even solely own that equipment at NEMS. It's along with Belvere, Waterville, Eden, and High Park. All right. But at least there's a tangible asset to the taxpayers, and you could get another service in there in a swifter manner. Being that we're paying for all this stuff anyways, I don't see why we couldn't structure the contract that way. Roger's always said he's looking out for the taxpayers and that's one way I think to do it. So we own the uniforms and the patrol cars and if they left. I mean, what's the disadvantage? Yeah. I'm not saying they're leaving, but there's at least some assurance with them and there's none with I mean, if if um, Walker decided they no longer wanted their services, could they have to prorate their share of the capital? No, I I believe it's structured to where if NEMS leaves. I think you're right. right. If one town pulls out of that contract, I don't think they're getting anything, but if it, if NEMS were to terminate or say that I don't know. Say the state of Vermont decided they didn't want county sheriff's departments anymore. They just disappeared into the snow. Do we own the NEMS building? Yeah. Scott, yeah, talk, Scott talks about that every time he comes. The yeah, NEMS building. Yes. What about? The town's own it. If they leave. Right. That'd be a mess to more, do. More like they years. would get bought out by a hedge fund or something. I don't see the harm in asking the question. Well, apparently I'm not the popular opinion, so let's just move on. No, I agree. I, 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 agree thought, I thought it same thing for years. It always was very puzzling to me that we contribute. I mean, if you look at this budget, the amount of money that we're putting into that budget is for patrol vehicles. Um, you know, there's a lot of intangible stuff that we wouldn't get back for yeah, training and stuff like that. Uniforms and equipment, all of that stuff is, yeah, you know, particularly the vehicles. Yep. You know, I it's quite a fleet. fleet. Yeah. There's a lot of mm -hmm. tangible stuff behind it, but this is just supposed to be a quick budget 
conversation. I kind of shoot. No, we always so. talk about it. It's good. We all. I mean, it always comes up, so we should just talk about it. Um, he said that they can try to have a draft out to us next uh, next week. I said that would be helpful. Like well, in your initial conversation, he said he was going to be under five percent, right? Uh, yeah, he did. I think he. I shouldn't say what I think. Yes, he did. Because I don't know. I don't know if what I think I remember saying is right or not. So I'm not going to say it. Oh, wonderful. Um. So okay. Thomas, I guess meeting with any select board member is fine, but we all have our own lumps in the budget process. And yeah. if like getting one select board member's questions out of the way is great. <laughs> It's, like we're still going to go around in circles. <laughs> now, what Jason's saying is Beth is overly opinionated. And I That's not what is. Jason's saying. Just, so we're <laughs> just for the record. But I'm good, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, good, read your I'm good with whatever. I think we're, maybe I'm wrong, but our board is very passionate about budgets and trying to make sure they're as accurate as possible. And he's not that. good with whatever. Don't listen to him. Yeah. <laughs> no, you. You can meet with as many as you want. I'm, it's just, true. I'm just saying, like, if you met with Duncan, Beth and I are going to have questions come to meeting time anyways. And I didn't want you to be, like, tying up a bowl all the time if it was going to end up in a circle. But you can do whatever you want. Yeah, I was, uh, I was just going to shoot out it quick. I broke out a section of the budget. That's the responsibility of, like, the board. I mean, also the full board, but mostly the board and the town administrator. And I was just going to shoot it out to you guys and say, okay, where are your priorities for me to do my research in the next two weeks? Like, what do you want to meet it? So that way I'm focusing on like specific lines and you guys each can pick, say, Tom, I want you to do X, Y, Z for the next two weeks. And then hopefully at that meeting, we can put that to bed, you know, with, with this discussion. And then maybe in two weeks after that, we can nail down another section. But um, right now we've tied away most of the other stuff, the, the subcommittees. So now that that's ready for review, but it's like in draft mm -hmm. stage, now the next step is to create the draft stage for the, the board TA section. And if we can do that in the next two weeks, just assign priorities, I think we can move it, move it along, at least in some direction. Just so we're not like shotgunning, but just kind of in a linear path. Yeah. yeah. Unfortunately, I think that Devin's probably right. And, uh, Unfortunately, I'm right. No, no, not 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 that you're I not that you're right. The, the, the unfortunate <laughs> aspect of that is that I think if you ask that question, you're going to get five different answers, mm -hmm. um, for five different priorities, and I think there's value to the board sitting down with the budget <clears throat> and working through it, and you'll end up with that guidance as a result of that yeah. process, but. I'm not sure that asking us individually for our input on that is going to really streamline the process a whole lot. So I will just propose that we already have a few sub a few sections that are draft form. We have highway, historical, library, rec, those those four. Street park. Mm, it's not, not in here. Yeah, that was done. Okay. Gotcha. But the four we have are those four. I would say we should all look at those four, compile our questions within the within the documents, push them back out to Tom if you have any questions about any of those. And if they weren't a further discussion, like have the discussion or try to. I don't think that I can tell you you're gonna hear from me on a couple. Mm, probably two. You're gonna hear from Evan on three. <laughs> like I can tell you who you're going to hear from for each of these, these yeah. things, right? Yeah. Um, send the questions and then I'll send them back to the, sub, to the subcommittees. And, and, then, and then keep going, what, yeah. doing what you're saying. Keep adding a section exactly. and just keep pushing what you yeah. have. Yeah. You know, yeah. just taking it a step at a time versus a big... In all honesty, I don't try to make the process harder. I don't think any of this does. <laughs> Uh, well, you just do, right? Yeah. I don't know. Like last year, it seemed like all the board members cared about the budget and yeah. wanted to put together an accurate budget, and it made the process harder because they cared so much. So don't get frustrated with the process because there's still items yeah, that I asked confused. Rosemary because I'm confused about you know our 
capital equipment reserve comes from small equipment in the office. Reserve. Buildings, and buildings and grounds. Yeah, there you go. Buildings and grounds reserve fund is funded out of surplus yeah. from small equipment in the office. It's just some things I'm confused year. about every year. Hmm. Why not this year? We probably already spent it on copiers. Because we pulled it. Okay. Uh, draft. So you already have skate park. You're going to push that out to us. Can you dive into the select board section? That's a section that has emergency services, right? Yeah, so there's um, the section that I'm calling the select board section is uh, would be well, general be government, select board thing. expense, and um, any sections, uh, building and grounds expense. And town office expense, and then I think and public safety, public safety. Although that's one that we really can't. And then control. Rosemary is going to direct me things that she does versus things she wants me to do. So like I think there'll be other things within the town office, but that's all going to be covered by Rosemary. Um, okay. Pretty much wherever there's not like a chair, a committee, or uh, organization where there's like a an individual to reach out to to make that decision and follow some select board kind of how I look at it. This year's going to be tricky, I feel like, because we're spending money in weird ways. So looking at our actuals from this year to date, it's going to be harder than it has been in prior years, I think. You know, Evan, uh, when he made that motion for 5% this year and zero next year, wait a minute. It wasn't a motion. It was just a guidance that we wanted to. Five percent reduction. So like when you I started at twelve. Oh my gosh! It wasn't right. Evan. Yeah, he wanted way but too much. This, but yeah, he wanted twenty. If you get a zero, actually gets us through this year. Say, so you know what? Next year we're keeping it at zero, and you can like move within your different lines. But if your total is zero, like, and each category is going to stay at zero, so, like, it, it actually it makes the process. I'm not Easy. following, but I think that's what we tried to do in the past. Taking FY25 and make, and using FY24 as our foundation, that's what we've done in the past. And that's what you're saying? Uh, no. What I'm saying is you said FY25 should have a 0% increase from FY24. So we know we already approved FY24. So FY25, regardless of actuals, we need to... We, we're going to have to have projected, and wherever we're going over, we need to reduce somewhere else. I don't think we're going to, like, I hear the words that you're saying. I don't think that's possible, just because some of our higher expense items we don't have a lot of control over. Uh, but, yeah, we should strive to get there. It is optimistic. Jason was raising his hand. No, more of his eyebrow. He's using his finger for his eyebrow up. No, I had a stone. slight question. Because I... I'm all for a very accurate budget, and I want to be a big part of the highway budget when we do that. When we zero You're going to do it first, just so you know. If we're not going to do it, you're going to do it first. Okay. When we zero it, though, and we've zero, you know, we've level funded for the last three plus years, and the cost of everything goes up, technically we're going down. We're not level funding. We're Even better. Well, <laughs> I mean, where do I sign? That's not what he said. <laughs> That's not what he said. You, I'm saying miracle the economy has been solved. Able to do, you know. You're losing ground. Yes, that's what I meant. Uh, Literally. You mean uh, cost? Uh, yeah. That's You're going similar. backwards. That's similar to what Eric Osgood used to say. Mm -hmm. Anytime you're below the inflation rate, you're technically getting behind. But yeah. Yeah, I mean, I guess if you look at it in a broad spectrum like that, but it's really... Don't, okay, my guidance is do not say every line gets reduced by it or stays the same. It's more of like overall, are there things we can get rid of that it won't really hurt if we get rid of it for a year? Or maybe it will. I don't know. But let's look at like, we can just get rid of this thing and not cut this thing at all, this other thing, like, and would, see how we can balance it. Would the board be supportive of looking at a budget and shooting for like, realistic and maybe like, for some, me and Tom talked about this. Don't maybe. present something that's not going to happen. Like if it's not realistic, then don't, there's no point in spending time on it. 
Could you finish what your question was, please? Right. Yeah. I'm going to be honest. The last couple of years I've been in charge, the budget on my side is unrealistic because the way things went about, they were pulled from one move to the other. So I've talked to Tom about this, and I, I would like to put a realistic budget together where gravel, we know this is what, what, is what we need to spend, but maybe, you know, just for example, winter salt, we can reduce by 10000 So I would like to make a realistic budget, and I've talked to Tom about this, so we can present it, and this is what we're going to kind of shoot for, because it's realistic numbers that are actually, this is what we need, not... Do it. If you can defend it while we're talking about it, just do it. I, I, if, if what you're saying, and I'm not sure this is what you're saying, is that you want to make sure the actual expenditures get assigned to the actual budget line items in the budget, I agree with you. I want to be able to track it so we yes, that's exactly what I want. I want to be able to look at it. This is what we actually spend. And put, well, put to bed the pipe dreams. Like, yes. If you're going to spend 55000 on fuel, don't put forty. Put yeah. 55 And like you said, make it, make it what it is, right? Yeah. And yeah. I remember having a discussion with a former town administrator at one point where he wanted to assign certain expenses to a other budget category because that budget category was going to be overexpended otherwise. That's no. not how you do a budget. No. No. I mean, a budget is a guess. A budget is a guess. At the end of the year, the, end, the bottom line, that's all that matters. That's all you've got control over is the total <coughs> number. And the budget is just it's guesses. It's, a, it's the explanation of movement of funds. Yeah. And so if you don't explain it properly, then you're never going to make a good budget again. You have to say what you spent money on, and then next year you're going to you're going to do a better job. But if you if you put it into a different line, all you're doing is lying to yourself. Yeah. It's it's never going to work. It's it's not. It's yeah. not an accurate. If I ever do that, you better be calling me out in the I, moment I, because I, I won't do that. But I, I was a treasurer, you know, yeah. like for 10 years, and I would yeah. like that like drives me nuts. I might do it. They're not bank I accounts. Do it. It's explanation of, of move, month, how money moves. And really when you look at a budget, you yeah. don't look at individual line items. You look at the total budget or right. the total category. Yeah, um, and whether you overexpend a line item in a budget, yeah. and like if we have bad years, I disagree. Trucks. Okay, wait a second. I'm going to fundamentally disagree with if you overexpend a line item because because there are line items in this budget that are both specific enough, and there's other items that are broad enough that we should not be overextending a miscellaneous by fifteen hundred dollars if the budget amount is three hundred. Uh, I have never liked the idea of a miscellaneous category. Um, so, okay, we're it's okay, great. good. So I just told them to get rid of them all this year. You guys are way too energetic about this. I just told like them that. like when a bunch of dorks in the room, because I look at the energy, we talk about budget, and everyone's like, ah. Oh. So this was supposed to be a summary and an update, so I, yeah. I would advocate See, this is just <laughs> talking. This is talking about a summary last half an hour. Right. It's so funny. This is the budget process. Okay, and it's true, we actually are talking about a summary about budget. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, you know, okay. My concern is, is that we're, we're playing with numbers. We're not really talking about what our needs are or what our goals are. We're just saying, oh, we want to level fund. Well, do we want to level fund because we're afraid to raise taxes? Are we, is the grain list going to grow? I mean, we're sort of taking what we have and backing up versus saying, our, these are our needs. We need to fund that. That's what I want to. That's what I want to do. That's the way I look at what we do. Yeah, do that's like, the way the state tries to do it. It isn't like, oh, we've got this much money. We, we can raise more money. If we have so to if you money. want specific things that you do not think we have something in the budget for, you need to bring it up with yes. Tom now. Now is the time. Okay. And, and just because we level fund, there's three ways to like to to fund the budget. One is to you can a raise a grand list. You can raise taxes, or you can raise efficiency within, within, and that's how you can actually lower expenditures. So, so we, there's different ways that we can reduce spending without, um, in, by a, you know, there's different ways that we can actually reduce that line to stay, stay level funded through efficiencies or grand lists without raising taxes. So playing with those three variables, but you're, to your point, you can't play with three variables to a goal if you don't know what the goal is. Right, and, my, yeah. and and I assume under efficiencies and variables, you're talking about 
of a gazillion dollars of grant money that we bring into this town. Exactly. Because, right. I mean, the, you get a pile of grant money, we get grant right. money, we're, we're spending it on the That's right. And, light industrial And project. maybe it's technology, you know, like there's, yeah. there's all sorts there's of things. There's so much grant money out there. The, you know, at the end of the day, though, it really doesn't, it almost doesn't matter what the budget is, what, to, to me, what's more important is the rate, is the impact on the amount to be raised by taxes. Okay. Yeah, well, that's tax what rate. I was wondering. Yeah. Is that what you the guys are talking yeah. about when you're saying level fund it because you care about taxes or because you just want to level fund it? I, I don't believe in level funding for level funding's sake. I believe in looking at, when I think about the budget, we can do all of the things that we want to do with regard to coming up with a level funded budget. Understand that if you have a level funded budget, it doesn't necessarily mean that your tax rate is going to be I the same as it was last year. I totally understand that. Yeah. So, yeah, you know, your tax rate awful. could be, you know, 10% higher. Yeah. And you've got a 0% increase in your budget. I, there, the two, there's not a nexus between the two. I totally understand. Necessarily. That's why I wanted clarity. That's why I brought up what, I, what, yeah. what, is, your, what is your goal with level funding? Is it tax rate? Is it, is it what you think is the right amount? Or is it you just feel good doing one zero percent? My, my goal would be more along the, the line of the impact to the individual taxpayers. On the right. budget. You could quadruple your expenses in any given year. You bring it in in grants. Yeah, and if you if right. you're tax right. so look at all the hard work right. two or three percent. Right, I or, think you've done a pretty good job. Yeah, so you're more based on tax rate where I am. Uh, I'd like to say I think we spent more time talking about a summary on the budget than the school board, who has double our budget, spends on their whole budget. Double. We're like really good with our time. Did they have triple the budget. More. We affect thirty percent of your tax bills, and we're Did sitting here for half an hour. No. Yes, I can. Nope. Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, we'll discuss. So we're all good with the next steps. Yeah. I think. Is it halfway clear, Tom? School tax. Is it clear that we all really care? Yeah. That's it. I care that we care. Are we good that with next steps though? Are you good? You're good too. Yeah. Everybody else. Bring in a lot of grant money. To spend if you money. have feedback, you have to give it on those four spreadsheets or new ideas. You have to give it to Tom. Okay. You have like a right, two week period. Good. I'm going to take time out to lunch and spend some money. About time. Why not me? Okay. I know we had a huge discussion about how much to try and have. Okay, hold on. There's too many conversations happening. All right. All okay, go ahead. Well, I know that we had a, a huge discussion about how much to get departments to reduce their budgets in the current year. Did we also decide on a 0% increase of the budget going forward? I did look at Rosemary. We did? Okay. Well, I'm surprised at myself that no. I went along with that. <laughs> You're surprised that you went along with that? I think we said we would shoot for it. Yeah. And that, in that, we didn't know if it was possible or not. But well, tried. in all fairness, a zero percent increase in some people's mind is just the fact that the grain list grew enough to offset the tax rate. It's not necessarily zero percent. The thing is, like anyone who's tying our discussion about let's try to keep the budget flat, tying it directly to tax rate. Like that is not, it is way too early to be making those, drawing, drawing those conclusions, first of all. And secondly, that's not the same thing. I agree. Our, tax, our grand list might shrink next year. Right. So or it might go up. Stand. You don't know. You don't know. You build a mansion? Typically it goes so it up seems to be a lot of a year. Huh? If that, yeah, two on a month. Right now, but not. <clears throat> okay, one. let's move on. And we need to keep one, we need to keep one discussion happening at a time. Um, so, uh, discuss wages for budgeting and set town clerk, sorry, set clerk, treasurer, and assistant clerk, treasurer wages. 
I think this is more a conversation for Wednesday. It we is. Skip over it. Do we have any discussion for today? No. What are we doing on Wednesday? Joint meeting. Okay. Yeah. I wasn't kidding when I said tomorrow and Wednesday. Well, then I got an email that said it was on June 14th, so I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, we're skipping that one then. We'll do it Wednesday in the joint meeting. Uh, Northern Borders update, next steps, monthly, monthly contract. Um, Tim, do you see if Randall is on? Oh, he's not. Okay. Um, Could you make a motion for the signature paper? Papers, plural. Papers. Okay. To to have Beth sign the northern borders forms that are needed for the Napa. Any other one? I would make the motion to authorize Beth to sign or. You've already signed them, right? You need. I know we need a motion to sign them. I need. I, they're they're predated and everything, but we need a motion to sign them. Okay. I'll second that motion. It was pretty clear well, you got that wrong, right? Yeah, that was well, super clear. <laughs> <laughs> go over it again. They, it was NEPA and and uh, the NEPA research and what else? Oh. Um, yeah, I didn't have the acronyms. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I know. There's just so many. Is this in the board packet somewhere? No, it was a late edition. Yeah, yeah. 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 I'll, I'll tell you. Hold on. I'll tell you. So much time sensitive stuff for these things. Uh, uh, it's a, the NEPA's in environmental review with uh, homes. I'm almost there, sorry. We need to approve uh, NBRC and Grant agreement? Do we need to re-sign the grant agreement? Yeah, because it has the LDD added, maybe. Maybe that's why. Sorry. So as we get a solid emails. motion, I think we'll be like cooking with some propane here. Right now it's like watching paint dry for anybody that's on YouTube. Yeah, we go. Or are they on? Are, are we streaming on YouTube? Yeah, we're, we're pretty techy over here. Our wife had us pulled up. Lots of pressure. So. Wait, do we have EDA on here? On the agenda? We need, okay. EDA is an executive session. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, here we go. They're on the same, okay, that's fine. They're on the same email stream. Please hold. This is just an indication of how many emails we get about this stuff. It's a lot. Northern Borders grant application. Okay, so a revised grant application is the first. Got that oh, so the, revised okay. NBRC grant application. Okay. Revised NBRC. Oh my God. Wait, gr grant application? That's what you said, or is it grant application? Wait. Well, I mean, it's not the application, right? It's the. We need to resign. Grant agreement. No, we need to resign. Oh, why aren't you open? See, the electricity in the room talking about budgets was like palpable, but right now we're just kind of. I'm looking at your email and there's a grant agreement. Okay, grant agreement, fine. You can't read that. Did we um, vote on this? Did you to sign these things? No, right? hold on. We just to make sure it's not. I'm Seems not the same right. Lines. Your apartments all of them back up. Got the worst one. Left? Left. Bummer. It's okay. I'm going to give the press on the PD log. Okay, the grant agreement, sure. That's the one. And acknowledgement of compliance manual. That's the one I was looking for. Thank you. It's the complaint Please also manual. sign and return only the acknowledgement page of the complaint.
compliance manual as a PDF. Yeah. You're good on that, Donna? Yes, thank you. So the second thing is the acknowledgement page of the compliance manual? Acknowledgement page of the compliance yeah. manual. Yeah. Do you want anything more than just compliance manual? Like, is it the NBRC compliance manual or the... It is the NBRC compliance manual, yes. Yeah, sure. Okay. Duncan made the motion. Mark seconded it, right? So, so there's nothing with NEPA in its name, even though you guys were talking about that before? NEPA is the ED. No, NEPA is? NEPA. No, NEPA is the Northern Borders. There is also an EPA, an EPA form, please hold. Do you know all these acronyms, Tom? NEPA is like the environmental protection. Yeah. That's why it begins with N, right? <laughs> natural. The natural. Oh. No, it's not natural. Natural. National. It's national, yeah. Environmental oh, Protection right. Agency. Way to really take the fire out from underneath me, don't you? Environmental <laughs> Review. Okay, the NBRC, grant, How about grant, this? the compliance manual, October final. I motion for Beth Oy to sign all necessary paperwork for NBRC grant application that is needed up to this day. It's not your application. We already applied for the grant. I said all paperwork. Whether she's on the select board right? or not. You never have to do this again. A never ending contract. Address always, always, sign. always sign. Get your penny in. That's a great yeah. idea. Just delegate her to sign all MBRCs. Can you do that? Any and all necessary forms. Can I'm I just say secured. any necessary forms? All right, did somebody second that? Somebody get behind this. Second. Okay. We already have a motion on it the died. Board, so. It died, right? No, do there you withdraw? Was who, 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 somebody withdraw. Okay. withdraw. Okay. It died. I'm not sure that that there was even like a completed motion that could be withdrawn. Mine was, <laughs> right? The one you just did, yeah. Mine was all that. necessary paperwork for NBRC. Okay. I'll second that. Who okay. made the original <laughs> also. motion? All right, girl. I made the original motion. Yeah. I withdraw. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Okay. All okay, we have a motion and a second. Do we have any discussion? All those in favor? Me. All right. No, I almost enjoyed that. Right, well, now I never have to talk to you people again. <laughs> uh, okay, so I need to make sure that I get all the NBRCs signed. I think I already have them signed. There was, you're right, there is something about that NEPA form. Uh, it's the NEPA, the missing piece, and we have it Oh, somewhere. yes, the NEPA. Uh, the other thing we do have to talk about is the Mumley Agreement. Did you happen to find the Mumley Agreement, the it's contract? Signed. Somebody emailed it. I ask that because we need to know for sure if we can, if that contract includes all of the engineering services we need, that prior signed engineering. And if it doesn't, then we need to go to RFP. And we can't involve Monthly in the RFP build, but we need to go to RFP and get and select a vendor if that signed document doesn't specify all engineering services. And Mumley seemed to think that it did, because I was hoping Randall was here. Um, Mumley seemed to think that it did, but I don't know the answer. I think it does too, because if I'm going from memory, which I thought was a bad, yeah. dangerous thing. Um, Not your memory, just generally. No, my yeah. memory in particular is, is uh, <clears throat> suspect um, in a lot of areas. But I, I believe the contract was to prepare final engineering drawings sufficient to submit for Act 50 approval. That's which, what I remember as well. Yeah. Which but should pretty much be final plans. I got it. Okay. The scope of services. So I can't read anything. Uh, okay. Uh, utilizing the previously completed topographic survey and existing knowledge of the property, generate a revised conceptual plan for the site and coordinate with the town for input. Finalized site plan, grading, and utility design, state wastewater system and potable water supply permits, including an updated water and wastewater design 
based on the current state regulation to extend municipal sewer and water within the proposed development complete application and submit to state. Um, and includes state construction general permits, including a complete application and submission to the state. And also, lastly, a state agency of transportation permit which includes meeting with VTRAN utility engineer if needed to discuss previously approved or expired curb cut approval and update application based on revised site plan and submit to VTRANS. So it does sound like that's pretty complete. I think it is. What, what, what wouldn't be covered though would be any uh, construction engineering services. Like yes. you know, bid you know, putting it out to you know, developing a bid specification for the project, putting it out to bid. Oh, uh, there's more. Bids. Sorry, there's this is an image, and then there's more. It also includes state stormwater discharge permit, including design based on revised plan, a completed application <laughs> to the state. Also, know. state public water system permit. Also, update Act 250 land use permit and application which includes a whole bunch of things. That's a technical term. Yep, a whole bunch of things, sure, sure is. Uh, it inc that includes, okay, that includes the ability to s serve letters, which it lists a whole bunch of letters. Um, transfer Act 250 application materials to an online application, update the ANR wetland sign off, update the traffic analysis, obtain offsite um, mitigation from the Department of Ag for prime ag soils, obtain mitigation agreement from the Department of Fish and Wildlife for impact to wheel, to deer and winter yard buffers. Is that, are those the same things as the NEPA thing, NEPA aspects? Mm, no, not specifically. <coughs> so construct cost estimate, estimation, boundary survey, it excludes design upgrades to the systems, such as booster pumps, etc. cetera, um, infrastructure costs for existing. We will work with the town and village to ensure that the case at onset of the project will avoid any later complications, details, blah, blah, blah. So, pardon me for being ignorant. What was the original question that led to reading all that? Somebody could follow up and we could move on. The original, this is important, first of all, so we don't need to rush through it because we need to get it right. And secondly, um, the original question is, does this cover all of the engineering services that we're going to need? Because if it does, then we do not have to put out another RFP. If it doesn't, then we do need to put out another another RFP. And Mumley can't be. And Mumley cannot be part of the RFP creation. They can, be, they can apply and bid, but they can't be part of the application, the RFP creation. It's not going to cover all the engineering services we need. It will not. No, we do so go yeah, we need development of okay. specifications, you know, engineering services during the tenancy of the project and all those things. No, it's paying for reworking what was already paid for. Um, In a way. You could look at it that way, yeah. A portion of it. I thought we, we should check on that because I thought that Catherine said, Catherine, this is Northern me. Borders. Yeah. This is not EDA. It's not EDA. But if there's overlap, I thought Catherine said when we met up at the site <clears throat> that the engineer that developed the site plans couldn't be the final engineer. They were, they were barred from being, uh, providing final engineering services. So we should get that answered. Hmm. And that would be pretty, that would be fairly typical of federally um, funded projects that the, the design engineer couldn't also be the construction engineer on the project. We had that with the Main Street project because we had to put out a bid for Peter DeGraff, where Otter Creek did the construction services, but 
Was it two friends not two friends one way back? Um, the one that Gail King worked for developed the actual plans and prints. And they were fired. Yeah, Leon Dickinson. They were fired from being able to be a construction management type contract. They couldn't do it. What are you looking for I'm emailing Tori and uh, so we don't have to answer that question, you know, right right now. But it's it's one that I have a note. will be on our. What? I have a note to email Randall to reach out to Catherine about it. Uh, I'm gonna email these three because I put them all to be on the same page for you. I'm dumping your copy. Okay. So I'll get signing NDRC. Uh, we do need to dig out the signed Mumley contract because we approved it uh, February 22nd of 2023, but I don't have a signed copy, I only have the draft copy. I'm sure that there's a file on that somewhere. I'm sure. Okay, uh, <coughs> anything else for Northern Borders? Okay, RFP for Emergency Protective Med Measures Award. award. Showed up a little early today, didn't I? <laughs> Pretty riveting stuff. I saw you on the edge of your seat during that Northern Border stuff. Straight period is all over the world again. Okay, the bids are opened on November 2nd. There's one bid for construction and one for installation. And these are the bids. Seeker approves the process for reimbursement because we went out twice and we still proceed to one bid. For the request for qualified contractors, yeah. receive any. So, does everybody want to look at it first? Did they go up? Uh, triple. <laughs> You'd be, would be what I would have done. Second bid cost money. Construction. That's two, mighty at all. Two hours. It's piece. supposed to be sealed. One is huh? for construction, one's for installation. <laughs> this one, okay, but it says that it was opened. <laughs> it was opened on November third. There was a so he emailed it and then hand delivered. Oh, that's the email. This is the hand. That one actually has a, a signature on it. Okay. So this has already technically been opened. Technically open, but not that one. <laughs> this one. <laughs> it's just a resealable envelope. Gotcha. So, uh, seems pretty straightforward to me. Motion to approve. The contracts were submitted. Do you have a second? Second. Any discussion? That seems like a slightly vague motion. The contracts that were submitted, do you want There was to only one, one for construction and one for installation. Do you want to say? The one, the one for construction was submitted by Brian Rolianitis of Valley Repair and Renovation. For the installation. The one for installation was submitted by. Why am I missing this? New England Foam Code. New England Foam? Oh, yeah. New England Foam and Code and Heat. They put the stamp in a weird spot. Did uh, the installation contractor give you date? I have to call him tomorrow and say, hey, shall right. text him right now. Yeah. Could you do me a favor? Just uh, let me send you his phone number. Yeah. yeah. I grabbed it. I have his phone number somewhere, but I just got to just text it to me. Yes. Yeah. 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 He's good with the amendments. <laughs> Shane's good with the amendments or additions. I'm good with the adding in names. Okay. And, and you don't need the amounts? There's only one copy going around here, Donna. Well, I mean, it's up to you guys if you think the amounts. Duncan, be Duncan can tell us the amounts. What, what, what do you want to know? Total, total cost for insulation, you want that? Yeah. Uh, 6950 
dollars and no one hundreds. Total cost for construction is seventeen thousand six hundred fifty dollars. Mm -hmm. okay. And this this covers both buildings. Yeah, just the emergency. Yeah, so this it's, is it's just the emergency protective measures, right. not full rebuild. Yeah, yeah, but it but it covers both the covers the municipal building and all of it for right. emergency protective measures. Motion and second. Okay, we have a motion we have a motion and second on the floor right. and discussion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you for your patience. You can stay for the rest if you want. Oh, I have multiple fronts. <laughs> Everybody's <laughs> writing out by subject. Which subject are you here for, Scott? <clears throat> I'm just bored. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, you must be really <laughs> bored. <laughs> Nobody's <laughs> this bored. <laughs> oh, no. Thank you, Brian. Yeah, I, I feel like we're going to lose another attendee here after this next topic. <laughs> Uh, oh, what is our number? 4720-4782. Thank you for being patient with us. Okay, Justin, okay. Uh, team and Justin and team both. Okay, uh, assessor update. Justin, welcome. Did Justin, do you know everybody? We should probably introduce ourselves. No, sure. I don't know everybody. I know you. Start with Mark. Do you know me? What's my name? <laughs> no, Mark Woodward. <laughs> Rosemary, you know her. He knows me, unfortunately. I mean, unfortunately for him, he knows me. You drafted the employment letter. <laughs> uh, Evan Patch, select board member. That boy, he's mad. Shane Spence. And you know Thomas. Uh, and Dean, work, you know Dean and Donna is our minute taker, and Scott is our flood zone, flood zone administrator and former Village of Johnson trustee. Chair. <laughs> chair. Oh, yeah, yeah, chair. And my condolences. Congratulations. Thank you. Okay. Um, so, Justin, sorry, I'm making all this noise. Did everyone get any of the my update I can add? Yes. Everybody. There was two separate ones. What's this? Right? Let me get one today. We got one Friday. How many? Oh, wait, his update? Today? We didn't get one today. Are you sure? Today. Yeah, I'm positive. Maybe Friday. Mm. I put one in the updated packet. Oh, that's fine. Right, yeah, I did. Hey, hey. Page 21. But there's, they're different. Oh, yeah, well. I believe so. Oh, um, maybe this is, this is September 22nd. Um, You're talking about the update, not the request, right? Yeah, it's one of the Okay. On yeah, so the update, yeah. So, everything's going well. I like being a tester. I'm piecing multiple different um, jobs together right now. So, do you know my background at all? Like my resume and all that stuff? I start there. I think a while ago, but yeah, go for it. Okay. So, I started in municipal government as the assistant town clerk and treasurer for the town of Albany. And I went on to the town of Ashford as well. Then I started working for Hyde Park as the board clerk, transitioned into assessor. Started with Hyde Park and Johnson, and I've added St. George. And now I'm working for the town of Berkshire as well. Berkshire isn't officially part of the local agreement at this point, so I'm just working with them independently as their employee until and if they join on. They had that motion to do so. I feel like the motion is not really a good motion to just join, but the intent is there. Um, yeah, outside of that, right now I'm still the board clerk in Hyde Park. I'm the board clerk down in St. George which is basically the same thing for Hyde Park, just more in-depth. It's almost like town administrator for St. George, just a small staff, a small town. Um, yeah. Right now, on average, between all my positions, I'm working about 40 hours a week, give or take a little bit. 
sometimes more depending on the night and days and so on. And thinking long term, as the two different options which kind of debate between, both of them consist of being an assessor. Right now, I like the balance that I have working for all the different towns in different capacities. And we could add one more town to the interlocal well, outside of Berkshire to make it like 32 hours, so it five towns. But if I do that, we are kind of looking at either Hyde Park or St. George, I would need to get done as a board clerk to make time for that other town, or continue as I am and just keep making this work. Considered, I've been put in an email, I kind of had this thought since last week, but adjusting the interlocal agreement, possibly, and having that include board clerk assistance to the town board's technical position, and just keep my current titles with all the towns, but just make it so it's all one interlocal, and then it'd be like maybe a sellable point as for assessor, it'd be 24 hours of assessor, and that additional 16 would be like kind of custom to me, and you could, you could sell this still. You know what I mean by sellable? And if I get if I get done, who want to come on next? And the next person may not want to be an assessor and a board clerk, but you still have the assessor at 24 hours prorated benefit, so you may have something more interested. Versus when I came on at 16, just over a couple benefits harder to find applicants for. Um, forgive my ignorance. What are you doing as a board clerk? I. Taking uh, agendas, minutes, etc., for the planning commission, development review board, and select board for St. George and Hyde Park. I see. In Hyde Park. And are you able to do a lot of this um, remotely? I am. Yeah. So board clerk is mostly a remote job. For the most part, especially in Hyde Park, it is. St. George is a little more in person. They don't have the technology right now. The things that need to do down there are more in depth, so it requires more face-to-face -face interaction. But I can still take a lot of that home from you. But I can do a little bit in person and then finish up at home. They don't record their meetings? Not usually. We just got Zoom, and our speaker microphone isn't very good at this point, so slowly but surely getting there. We know all about that. Yeah, same with us. Although we have speakers now. So Justin, I think I heard you say with the addition of Berkshire it would get you to 32 hours a week? Uh, Berkshire would be 24. Okay, and how would you get to 32? One of two ways. Either adding a fifth town, probably for like July 2025 or after, or taking the positions that I'm currently working and making the interlocal agreement for 40 hours based on what I'm already doing. Okay. So basically extending services to the town that you're already serving as listed for. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of like E911 is an optional add-on at this point. So I do E911 for Johnson. I do for St. George as well, but they hired me outside of interlocal agreement for that, but because I still can do the interlocal, so the board clerk could be like an optional add-on as well. I think Dominic does a great job of not trying to take her position in any type of way. So just keep what I'm already doing and touch on appropriately. And I did the math and it actually does equal up to about 40 hours perfectly even. I'm not sure how the overtime would work out, but some weeks of additional meetings and some weeks is less. But. It would seem like it would be pretty easy to add another town though. Aren't, aren't, aren't there a lot of towns looking for your services? There are. The town of Sheldon is specifically very, they need someone for January. I'm not at that capacity right now to be able to jump on that quickly with them. But yeah, the Vermont Beer Appraisal Company, they're retired and going out of business, so a lot of their towns will end up needing someone. Mm -hmm. Remember us when you're working for Essex Junction for six figures. Why are they, Mark? <laughs> for what? <laughs> Why are they going out of business? Is it because they can't find help? Or they're yeah. retiring? Yeah. yeah. Well, if one person passed away, then the other is retiring. Yeah. Well, 
right now, my focus personally is on health insurance and benefits. Because I have to go from the Medicaid over to actual health insurance having to pay for it. And yeah, I like working for multiple different towns, like helping out in different capacities, because a lot of these positions are hard to fill individually. And I'm never bored. Even at the board of I'm never bored. So, <coughs> Okay. Um, do you have questions for us? Like, what are, we're, what are your thoughts for this meeting? Like, what do you want to what do you want to get out of introductions and the like? Kind of two things: the town's long-term plan and how you folks want to see things evolve, and also a small list of requests. Okay. Over, you, you have requests of us? Yeah. Yeah. In, our, in your email? Yeah. They're in the. What's that? That was the other email, right? That's the attached email, I think. Uh, one is the computer. Yep, exactly. That wasn't from today. Uh, this was the original. What letter. page form right. are we looking at? You know? Which, it's not the one from today. It's from like Thursday or Friday last week. Yeah. Is it, now, is, it in the is it in the packet? Okay. It's not we, we, we authorized. Authorized. No, I don't think it's in the packet. I don't have to do it. It's it. after it was an email. Are you perfect? So the request, if I remember correctly, you have a couple extra computer, right? Yeah. I'm surprised. I think we already authorized it. Right? I'm really surprised that the computer is not already replaced because that's reimbursable through FEMA. And I would like Ron to follow up with the office staff and see why or you know whoever because that should be replaced Thank you. i can't remember if your request was for a laptop or a desktop but um, i believe that a lot of people moved to laptops we did upgrades so if it was a desktop are you okay with the laptop i prefer a desktop but dual screen would be stationary there yeah you can prefer a desktop I would say at the office. <clears throat> would you be opposed to just you know, a couple of $60 monitors and a docking station and you could have a laptop? It would be the same feel, right? Because you'd still have a dual station. But. That's not for cheaper. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. Um, if a lot of the work is remote and there's an interlocal agreement, do you need more than one computer or could like Johnson pay, if you already have a computer at like Hyde Park and doing the same type of work, Johnson just used that interlocal agreement to like co-own that laptop rather than having say four or five laptops for one for each town. I would recommend Johnson gets their own. St. George has purchased me a laptop and cell phone and Hyde Park has a laptop in their own system as well. That they kind of figure out which one I should save things to and so on and so forth could be complicated. If it was maybe from the beginning. Also, so how does that, I understand what you mean, like from the security standpoint, we keeping the networks within the town that you're working makes sense from that aspect. Um, you're not sharing email addresses or anything like that, right? You're not sharing documents between. Yeah, no, they all have their own emails. And you access those via VPN or remote desktop or something? Like, how do you get in when you're working from home? Yeah, I'll put out through, through the web browser. So you're primarily using email when you're working from home? Primarily, yeah. In Excel and in our cloud. Now that I'm back in the office, my desktop will be able to use that. Okay. So what do you use? I've got a new laptop. So, so we have a computer, we have a desktop, it sounds like, that you can use because we've replaced your computer with a laptop. And there's even two monitors up on top of the rack that nobody's using right now, too. Oh, perfect. They might have come from the assessor's office. Where are you working when you're working for Johnson? Upstairs. You're upstairs, too? It's a little crowded. Right next to me. I think you've got like 10 more people up there. It's kind of like a happy place, really. <laughs> It's a place, yeah. yeah. 
happening, Dean? So, oh. Justin, with the, with the computers, uh, um, maybe I'm oversimplifying this, but it seems like there's almost two needs for computers. One would be the desktop where you maintain the grand list, you enter all the data in, all the property cards, etc. And the other use would be out in the field to potentially enter information and data in the field. Or is that is that aspect of the laptop that you're using for Hyde Park cover? Because in, in the interlocal agreement, if I remember correctly, yes. the two towns were supposed to provide either a laptop or a tablet for your use in the field. And I think we had talked about Hyde Park providing that while Johnson was taking the employee aspect of it. I think. I, I think that's the way it worked out, kind of. So my question to you would be, are, are you covered for what we agreed to do? The use of the laptop that you, you're using for Hyde Park, does that is that going to cover you for your field work in Johnson? No, currently I don't have anything for field field work. Everything is like I have my laptop, but the town laptop, and I have to use that at the office. But when I'm in the field, I don't have any type of device. It's just pencil and paper. Okay. And is that what you're doing everywhere, or do you you are? It is everywhere. Yeah. It's, I personally don't mind it. I we initiated a conversation with Jimmerick about what would be the best type of tablet to use in the field and how you done there because it hasn't been a priority with everything else for catching up on and assessing, which pretty much caught up on everything. If I remember correctly from the original discussions about the interlocal agreement, the idea of a tablet for field use was really something that Terry was pushing pretty hard for. Um, yeah. I almost think yeah, I hear you saying that maybe it's not as, in, as important as that, or would, is it something you'd still like us to look into? I think it depends on how it would function. If I can do exactly what I wanted to in the field, then that would be helpful. If I can access the camera system and break down right there the square footage, do a, a sketch of the property and all that right there, that would be helpful. But if it's just re-entering data again when I get back, then it's just and Terry might have been pushing for that pretty hard because I don't think she liked to do a property assessment that well. She might have been looking for somebody that could do all of that, but she couldn't. We have a little bit of a different style. Like, I learned a lot. I've learned a lot from her. I still do, but we have a different style of how we yeah. do our business. Well, I guess my point would be keep us appraised as to whether or not yeah you think that's a necessary thing that we should be. And to be totally honest, I haven't used a docking station before. It sounds like you just bring a laptop and plug it in, you have two screens and... Yeah. Yes. Yeah. As yeah. yeah. simple as that. You can get them like USB, you're not USB plugging in your, You're not plugging in your power cord, instead you're just plugging in this other cord instead of plugging in your power cord. That's right. And it's connecting to your, it's connecting to your monitors. And once you have the two monitors, your world changes. But... But... Like I threw that one, I threw that one out there as an idea because I like the idea of mobility. But if Justin is telling us that he does not need mobility, I'm fine with just using a paperweight a desktop. Okay. If the screen or computer that Rosemary has can that be used with that a new laptop and connect to that monitor? Yeah, mm -hmm. you could just connect with the docking station. That's not going to be the best of both worlds. Right now, I have no way to print at the Johnson Town office, which isn't ideal. Right. So, it's almost just yeah, about printers. So, your other questions uh, are we good with the computer one? I think we're all supportive of Yeah, if you're, gonna, if you're happy with the desktop, then we have the desktop. Oh, have the desktop. Yeah, Perfect. I mean, I would, I would work with Tom and in Rosemary and just get, get it set up. Sounds like yeah, if you need help with tech group doing something, give them a call. Yeah. For the car magnet and the business cards, I say just order them. Yeah, it's, if it's under a thousand dollars, it follows yeah. our procurement policy. I believe Tom would order it. Yeah. Um, if you put it together actually, with orange, work, work safe, Justin. Work safe out of Barry. If you called and just 
you can just tell them what you want and they'll, yeah, they'll print it up. And Jason goes down there every so often, he'll either pick it up or it can be mailed to the office. Can we do the same for the uh, animal control and health officers? Magnets? And the pets. Yeah. Did you ask for magnets? The boosters had some magnets. No, I'm asking Nina. Me? ACO's asking. No. You well, I thought we asked for, we asked asked for hats and safety vests. And know. I did order those. Do you want magnets? But do they want them? Are they want to put them I in the vehicle? No. no. Not really? Because like Hyde Park, they have one um, on that they... I don't need to support it. Hyde Park is an official town of business, so it's not specific to any department. Do you want that? I think that'd be good, because then we can use it. So this could be interchangeable. Are you in the office tomorrow? Yes. So let's get it done. I, I would also think it would really be good to have a lanyard, and a, if you don't already have it, um, you know, something that identifies you. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah. I'm sure you can get I those. like the vest idea. Yeah, like a, just the, all the female people. Yeah, the female right. people have the, you know, because I, 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 the last thing I want to have happen is something happen to him because some idiot thinks he's on his property for some reason that he shouldn't be there. Right, yeah. That's like the scariest stuff. Well, we should actually put you on the website. Yeah. Just put all the people on one page. I got it. Yeah. Yeah. But if you want us to put your picture and name and title, probably not contact information, but we should do that. On the website or on the card? Oh, well. You can decide on a card. You, got, you can figure out the card side of it, but I'm thinking on, a, on the website. Cause, yeah. Just so people can look up. Just yeah, to get they it out. Some yeah, more people people badge. Know. You know, they could do the same thing. Yep. Any safety measure? Great. What were the other requests? Um, this letter of hire. Didn't we already do a revised letter of hire for the 24 hours? I mean, the 20 hours? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was St. George. George. Yeah. I don't think I've seen it. Um, it might just be on the list. Is this still on the list, John? Well, I thought Duncan was going to revise it. I don't know. I did, but you guys approved it and Beth signed it, I thought. So, we might be okay, ahead of you now, but maybe with a hiccup. <laughs> so thank you for communicating. I signed it. What did I do with it when I signed it? I <laughs> couldn't answer that. <laughs> I think it's got to be the win. You know? This is the, I think, I mean, that's really this windy. is the same adding St. George. <laughs> adding St. George. Changing oh, yeah. the changing the actual offer of employment oh. letter to the St. George. Yeah. So we're on that. Yeah. I'll look it up. We I know we did it. Um, and I'm pretty know. sure that we authorized Beth to but, sign it. Yeah, I don't know. Those are the four requests. So we might it, need to revise that. It or, addresses the wages in the updated letter, yes. The mm. did not do benefits. I don't no, we didn't do benefits. I don't think so. For the twenty hours of that. Right. <coughs> so, so we can look at that and get back to you. I mean we're not gonna have it tonight, obviously. And Berkshire was gonna start seven one, is that correct? July first, Berkshire was gonna join. Berkshire would join Sheldon. Sheldon. I guess I was under the impression they weren't starting until the next fiscal year. Yeah, me too. Well, they were, uh, Sheldon. Berkshire was ready whenever. Right next to Berkshire. And I think Just we're not ready now. until, I don't know. Did you guys meet that Thursday? You guys were going to meet. We're meeting this coming Wednesday. Who are we? No, 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 no. no. The so with Justin after our letter conversation. Because we had talked, because we had talked about, we don't have budgeted benefits for this fiscal year that we're in right now. Just so you know, like just for full transparency. So we had been looking at adding them in in our next fiscal year. We we met. You, Ron, and I met, and St. George was. Supposed to get on the call, and they didn't. 
Um, and I think the upshot of that meeting was Ron was going to submit a letter out to Lamoille County towns mm -hmm. to see if there was additional interest in Lamoille County towns. And reach out to LCPC. And reach out to LCPC. And Justin has indicated some concerns about LCPC acting as the um, administrator of that, um, which we should take into consideration. I don't know that need to deal with that. But, but we also asked Tom to look at what the potential budget impact was to our budget based on Berkshire becoming a, a party. I, uh, I the those policy. spreadsheets are actually in Beth's folder if you want to look at them right now. Are they these ones? No, um, I, have in the, I, I didn't feel the appropriate to put back in. I printed a spreadsheet that has the cost. Oh, you, this is one that you did? Well, it's going to be this question. Oh, gotcha. This is the first time I've seen this one. So. Well, the thing is that. So if you look at that spreadsheet right there, Beth. Hold on. Um, if we are talking about employee. Benefits or negotiations or anything like that, we typically do that in executive session. And if I pull these out and we start looking at them, they are public documents. If everybody's okay with them being public documents, I still don't think that they should be public documents, actually, because they're still employee documents. Because yeah. you are an employee of our town. So I don't actually want to pull them out and talk about them right now because we are in public session. Yeah. So I'm not going to. Um, uh, deal. I think we understand your request, and we could have an executive session to discuss, if you're okay with that. It's not going to be now because we have another eight items and three other executive sessions already. We seem um. to be really popular. So, Justin, I think that the takeaway is we hear you. Regarding the profile needs, etc. Mm -hmm. Yep. And I think you've been really articulate in what your request, requests are in emails, very specifically. So, I do think we need to have discussions in executive session out of fairness to you, more than us, really. Um, but we need to follow up with you. So. Let us take the action of scheduling an executive session to do this. We can do it in our next board meeting. And one of us, probably either Duncan or myself, uh, or possibly Tom, but probably Duncan or myself, will reach out and have the conversation at that time about that. Uh, and as I think I mentioned here, if everyone's aware of that, I Next child due in January, and we're also closing on a property in Hyde Park, knock on wood, in December. Mm -hmm. So, a couple of different things in the air for budgeting purposes. And, yeah, so it's a decision for the next meeting. I really appreciate that. Just to know where, where we're going from June to Yeah. Okay. That's fair. Uh, other than that, I think that you guys have anything else for me. I, I really appreciate you coming in, and I just wanted to say that I, everything that I've heard has been very positive um, about you. And I, as an individual board member, want to do what we can do to keep keep you in the stirrups. That's an odd way to put it. But. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Super. He's odd. Well, you know, you could get locked out. Guy. He's and, clearly uh, a man. Right. Um, Yes, thank you. Trust up every same thing for years. I mean, for How do you follow that one? <laughs> <laughs> I think mine had one where yours did. Like, that's kind of what weird. did you say? <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. okay. Yes, thank you for your communication. Scott's got his hand on the saddle. Scott? The better. It involves floods. So uh, I can wait. Okay. But before oh. I do, I just want to throw something out. Okay, yeah. We're not going to leave yet. You are going to be at our two meetings in November and two in December? 
Yeah, uh, is that still tomorrow? Tomorrow, yeah. and then two weeks from tomorrow, and then the second and fourth Tuesday in December as well. Right? We're going to talk about that tomorrow. I guess we're going to talk yeah, about that. might not be able to do the December. Yeah, December yeah. That's subject to change. Yeah. The second one's where hair are next possible. Oh, definitely here for the yeah. um, November ones. Oh. Okay. I think we're required to have you or Terry to even have a meeting. Uh, is, oh, we need to be here? Is, is a board of abatement. Of of Rosemary, am I wrong about this? I screw it up every time. Quorum of the select board yep. plus the town treasurer mm -hmm. plus the assessor is needed for a board of abatement. So if you or Terry is not here for those meetings, oh, they're well, canceled. That's well, that's already there, so. You go. So they have to assess it. But isn't that needed? Well, well, we should call be. them in if, if needed. Yeah, we've done like call in, like, <coughs> Zoom call in. They haven't been in person, but they've been. It's relevant in for the change of value. Because oftentimes the value is not changed by a dollar amount. I mean, that can be complicated. It's changed by the absence of, a, of like a score for like the camera values. But for, a bit, for the board of abatement, you can't change the values. That's either all or nothing. No, you, you, know, you can it, abate It's them. about abating taxes, but you can't change value. Uh, it's not like part. a grievance here. No. It's not like a grievance here. Uh, and we could also abate you know, water bills. Yeah. At the would like that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we took that off the, yeah. It's yeah. still allowed by Vermont State statute. Yeah, exactly. well, I, think, I think we specifically <laughs> voted, voted not. So you have to look forward to tomorrow. I'm used to it. Oh, you are. Okay. I think it's good that you can explain the. Yeah, I, I see value in it, for yeah. sure. I think I'm good if everybody else. Eric is the chair of that group, Eric Osgood. Um, so if you need to coordinate how you participate, it would probably be with Eric or Rosemary. That would be helpful too. Yeah, we're all around and connect a little bit. Mm -hmm. Justin, thank you so much for everything. And everything that everybody said is true. We very much appreciate you. So thank you. Thank you. Scott? Okay. Scott? Yeah, just real quick. Um, I got a call today from Sue Levering um, from the Arboretum folks. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and they were digging in their sidewalks with uh, crushed stone. And there was a question that came up about the amount of sod that they were removing because now it is actually adding fill into a floodplain, town kind of owned, right? Um, so we stockpile all that sod up in the corner of the property that is out of the floodplain. So there it sits. Um, Eric, did you did. we have a lot of people watching everybody do everything now, I was wondering, Tom, if you want to permit fill out for that, even though it's such a, a minor adjustment. Let's do it. Yeah. If you want to what? A yeah. permit. Permit. Three um, inches by three feet wide. Yeah. To go through. And the section that we're hanging our hat on for this, you know, if you bring in fill, you have to remove fill somewhere else in the property. There's a question in the application that says if you bring in fill, you have to have an engineer or hydrologist come in, do a study, make sure it's not going to impact floodwaters to go higher. <clears throat> it's a great idea. Um, the concept is really difficult, and I don't know if you find anybody to do that. So Tom and I had decided it makes more sense fill in, fill out type of thing. If you get it in that zero amount, and we're going to call it good. So just if you have any questions coming from other folks in town, that's what we're up to. And I'll work on the permit. So you're saying yeah. the, that the arboretum is in the 1980s? It's in the 100 year flip point on the map, and that's the, I know the map is four, but that's what our rules say that we you know, use. And, that's what we're using. And really being the flagship of the community trying to do what well, the right thing. You know, and I think just piling in the northeast corner of the field might not be the best message either. Maybe that should go somewhere else. Yeah. Um, but just. Yeah. I know your town crews are super busy and they're doing a great job. There's like three yards worth of food. Saw yeah. Oh, yeah, just ask Eric if he wants it. I'm pretty sure he wants to build up one of those walls right Well, there. you know, I saw his uh, shack, his maple um, sugar shack. Sugar shack. Uh, gave a good hard look. <laughs> sugar <something>. house. <laughs> I was there today. Yeah, I was going to give him grief. I was going to go up with my clipboard. He got a permit for it. 
Did he really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's the first and only. He's the first one. I'll work on that tomorrow. Right, just just make sure no, no, no. no, no, no. He got a, he got a corner skunk yeah. yeah. so You guys keep talking about so Phil. What about Shep? Oh, I know. And, be, and because I've been so concerned with the town budget and making sure it's like not going to increase, I just found 50 bucks in the back room. Oh, nice. You can balance the budget. <laughs> yeah, man. I don't know how far this is going to get me. This we'll looks see. like Biden money. Thank you, sir. Okay. Yeah, Thanks, care. Scott. Uh, okay. All right, Rail Trail Committee resignation. I was not on that email. So I, don't know. I wasn't either. Aww. Eva Rose is stepping down, and Allie Kratzer is stepping down. And who? Allie Kratzer. She's the one that was going to help us with the web page, don't you? No, that's Adrian. That was Adrian. Adrian. Yeah. Allie's the chair. It was the chair. So they've had a total of two or three meetings? They've had a, a lot of meetings. I mean, they definitely took a little bit of time off after the flood, but they had probably, I think it was four okay. or five so meetings four before Four or five then, instead of two or three. And then a bunch more after that. All There's four or five before. Set resignations. Can you provide a thank you letter? I was just accepting resignations. Okay. Well, you should provide thank you letters to be consistent. And we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right, let's have it. Shane, you know, do they have any other people interested? Uh, not that I'm aware of. Um, there are people that, you know, have been involved with one thing or another who might be, but that they're going to be uh, putting out viewers. Yeah. Like the so should those be posted, be posted in accordance with their yeah. policy? For I made a note to do that. Yeah. That's right. Okay. I mean, that's um, going to be an important committee with the grant stuff that the state's offering. So. That's Johnson awesome. City and Grace right there, that real trip. And I, I will also say while we're kind of on the subject, um, they talked about having uh, Randall look at a uh, low rent grant to do scoping for a bike lane on Railroad Street. Um, so I believe the next step would be for Randall to come to us with some sort of proposal on that. Um, just wanted to update you on what's been happening with that. So just to be clear, a committee can't assign our employees work. Um, uh, like that's an important clarification. But if they asked him and he is willing to look into it, um, cool. I, I think he, what happened was there was sorry, uh, there was a communication between them about uh, various grant opportunities uh, that Tory had given a list to the, the committee. Um, I think they passed that list on to Randall, and Randall said, "This is one that I could potentially work on if you were interested." So, okay. in the end, Randall works for the select board and not for Tom. Right. <clears throat> Can I update? Yep, Can I update, Dean? Update away. Uh, well, uh, through my email, uh, I've been in touch with all the local ACOs, been in touch with the Justice for Dogs, Amy, who runs the, who runs that program. Uh, been in touch with a lot of people, uh, trying to come up with some options. Um, a lot of people are kind of, what I feel is the same kind of scenario, is they're, they're, they're stuck, they haven't figured out a short term, and they're trying to figure out a long term um, they, nobody has come up with anybody with any local dog business that is willing to expand or add this kind of thing to their repertoire or, or expand their buildings or expand their business. Um, so that's been pretty much a dead end there. Um, uh, Hyde Park has, uh, gone ahead in my email, uh, they did approve uh, for their ACO to purchase a uh, total price of up to $7,500 $7, to purchase a, 
a rental, a, a used uh, mobile office, like for a worksite office, and they're going to set that up with a couple of kennels in it, and they're going to set it on the property above behind their town office to try and basically to solve their problem for for the immediate, not for the long term. Uh, many people are talking long term of trying to get everybody together to find a place, find a, uh, they even make prefab kennel buildings um, and trying to make that a forward solution for the future, but for the immediate, um, uh, very few people have answers. I've been in touch with the Humane Society over in Chittenden County, uh, Representative uh, Devin. Um, they are reviewing their, they're going to be recently going to be reviewing their contracts, um, and they have talked to, they talked to me about whether it might be something where they might extend because of everybody having our issues in La Moyle County, they might extend um, their contract offer to, to us, and it would be something around $100 a dog for us to bring a stray dog uh, there uh, to them. Um, that is one option uh, that has come up. I uh, spoke with uh, Amy over in Hyde Park, who's kind of coordinating and spearheaded this whole thing that they've come up with. Uh, and uh, she's spoken with Ron. Uh, they are going to have three kennels uh, in their building. Uh, the option might be that they might extend to us or, so, or also to some others. Uh, a kennel space for a fee that's going to have to be figured out, of course. Um, they have not figured out a lot of the other things. The only is they have not figured out who's going to take care of the dog, who's got, you know, the operating costs and everything else, food and stuff like that and all that. Um, as far as I know, their, their direction is relying on the ACO uh, who brings in the dog to take care of the dog for that for the time frame. Um, everybody's overtaxed um, uh, with with dogs and housing dogs, finding placements for dogs right now, um, and uh, it's a pretty it's a pretty big problem that we that we have a collective though of towns that are all in the same issue. Right now, Morrisville doesn't even have an ACO; they have the police do it, uh, and they're not super thrilled after ch chatting with. Someone, they're not super thrilled about that position. Um, so we have a lot of we have opportunity though that um, that if we can I don't know how, but if we can figure out how to get to that next step of but making a Chittenden plan. Chittenden County sounds really appealing. What's that? Chittenden County Humane Society mm -hmm. sounds really appealing. Yeah. They have a facility somewhere where they can. Okay. It's uh, they they do. Uh, I have not worked through all the details or anything. It was just it was a it was a conversation that I was having. And <coughs> they brought it up because their contracts are are coming up to be renewed, and they are looking into whether it's feasible uh, to extend that to over in our area. And so that feasibility is based on volume of dogs that they can handle? Yes. It's that, that will be kind of the key is they might extend it to us. It might be an option, but it might be also an option where I got to call up and, oh, I'm sorry, we will you know, have the space and now we're, you know, we're still. And then you've got to love the dog there. What's that? You'd have to love the dog. You'd have to drive the dog there. You'd be paying somebody at least two hours. I mean, I understand, but at this point, I gladly pay for the transportation. Yeah. Like, at least you have an option. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, there's, there's a piece to that that we haven't talked about at all, and that's long-term care of a dog and the long-term cost associated with that. Um, by statute, I think you have to you have to, you have to, if you pick up a stray, you're supposed to post a notice 
you're supposed to make every attempt possible to get a hold of the owner of the dog. Oftentimes you don't know who it is. Um, but there's a, there's a specified process. And at a minimum, if you followed all those procedures, I think you have to keep it for 10 days. Seven days to try and notify the owner. After the seven days, the dog becomes property of the town. After that, the town has 10 days technically by ordinance um, to where after that 10 days where you can try and place the dog into a shelter or some, uh, try and get them uh, into uh, some place that's going to adopt them out and then that kicks in the humane, technically humane uh, uh, destruction of the animal or, or, you're, or you're holding on to that dog until you can figure out how to place. The, the issue is, in our area especially, with NCAL uh, being very strict on what dogs they take, and then the people that, that created themselves, Justice for Dogs, they created their program to take the uh, people that take the dogs that NCAL failed. They used to use the kennel to board their, their animals. Uh, at, at Lamoille Kennels. And now they don't have kennel space to actually hold their animals either. So there's a big, there's, like, there's just a breakdown in the whole, <laughs> in the There system. may be, but I, I, I personally don't want the taxpayers of the town of Johnson to pay for that breakdown. Um, there, there is a minimum period of time that we need to keep a dog, and that's <coughs> either rehoused or humanely destroyed. Infinitely. Yes, and that's seven days to try and reach the owner, if possible, with the, with the appropriate announcements and, and posting. It even goes through front porch forum and so on and so forth. And then after the seven days, legally, we can, as the town, have the dog humanely destroyed after 10 days following that seven. That's for a stray. If it's for that's for a stray. If it's forfeit animal. Just the 10 days, I assume. <coughs> after, yeah. What do you mean, forfeit? After the, after the, you don't have to take it. Well, I guess, so it makes every dog a stray, right? And you just let it go. Yeah. Yeah. So, it, it's, yeah, I just, uh, it, I mean, I don't know what the answer, don't know what the answer <coughs> is, but. I do. We don't have one. And, and uh, you know, just to mention it, it is state law that each town is supposed to have a kennel. What are we doing right now if you get a strike? Um, I've gotten multiple calls, and honestly, I've tried to work over the phone to have the person that got the dog to investigate where the, where the animal might belong, and I've lucked out that it was a neighbor's dog down the road. Because Perfect. the first thing I think of is, if I go over, that means I'm following my, you know, my division being an ACO, I would have to take, I would have to take possession of that dog. And once I do, like, I don't, we don't have a, we don't have an Dean, you mentioned um, kind of prefab uh, facilities. How much do you know? How much one of those would cost, and what the siting requirements would be? The ACO over in Hyde Park Alley uh, presented to their board uh, three meetings back um, a building that was a prefab kennel building. Came with a total of, I do believe, six kennels. Came already with a um, with a heat pump system for for heating and cooling, uh, and the kennel enclosures, uh, everything all together. I think it was right around, uh, if I do recall, it was right around 75000 uh, 75, I don't remember dimensions or anything specific beyond that. I just know that uh, I saw her presentation. I could get that information. But there are things that exist out there that, that, um, uh, that would, you know, instant cookie cutter fix. But 
Uh, I am talking to, I continue every week to talk to more people. We try and get more word out. We try, we have actually had, I've had actual co good conversations with some people that are exploring it, that are asking me hard questions about, well, how many dogs do you get? What's this, you know, what's the typical fee? So that they can understand even better what the potential might be. Um, so I do have some good continual leads that I'm following, but it's, you know, it's a double-edged sword of answer now and an answer, you know, six months, eight months from now. Have you had, I know you reached out to Justice for Dogs, but um, a couple of those people have reached out to me too, mm -hmm. and my, and when they offer that they could fo potentially foster, I've heard a couple times, my response to them is, if we give you a dog, <laughs> we're not going to want it back, kind of a thing. Like, and asking if they're working with, ideally, if we could set up, if somebody wants to foster, they would foster through a rescue, and the rescue would support the foster home. Right. Um, it would be great if we could get a network of fosters that are trying to help support this abandoned dog issue. Mm -hmm. And they're working through those, um, through the rescue. Yeah, I, I mean, uh, it yeah, doesn't solve I, the short term problem, right? It doesn't yeah. solve that seven days, but it solves the longer term problem. Yeah, it does. Yeah, if you have some place where it's a dog to go, then, then you can continue to work and get them placed somewhere. Um, you know, the, the dog that we currently are working with right now is on four different wait lists. Um, and, and just, you know, um, but as I've been continuing to talk, I've definitely been taking people's names and numbers and we're building a network of people we've talked to. I've talked to quite a few rescues that are outside of the Humane Society that are just personal ones and, and individual ones. Uh, i talked to ones over in New York, New Hampshire, uh, ones that work with specific breeds, ones that work with, you know, ones that were, you know, might, a dog that might have difficulty. But know. those rescues are like trained to handle these things. Yeah. They have the liability insurance that they need to handle these situations. And they're better suited to oh, yeah. place animals than... 100%. I, that, we shouldn't be in the business of placing animals. Nope. Uh, yeah. But even according to our ordinance, it's up to the ACO to, to get, once we once the once the seven day process has has expired, it's actually according to the ordinance, ACOs uh, is their job to find that dog a place to go. The combo is everybody is overtaxed right now with the system, and it's just it's a it's a perfect storm kind of thing that we really didn't need to try and manage. And, uh, I'm just hoping. Uh, luckily, we have not had calls where I have had to take possession of dogs. We do, do, am I wrong in thinking that we've got one in our possession right now? Yes. Yeah. How long has it been in possession? Uh, end of August. Because, oh. no, for beginning of September, because that's when the kennel gave us that letter and said they were going to, within two weeks, stop taking any ACOs. And that is a, a situation where that dog is being boarded for pay? What's that? That dog is being boarded for pay? That dog has been caretaken by Crystal, uh, the ACO, um, because we had no other uh, place placement. And yes, my my thought on the last couple of meetings that we've had, and I brought it up, that um, she should be reimbursed for her taking care of the animal um, because she has been taking care of the animal. At the same time, we, I mean, we've all been trying to figure out a place. She's the dog has been assessed um, by well, including NCAL, uh, three other programs. Unfortunately, she just she has failed every program when it comes to animal to animal interaction. 
Um, she just recently had gone to one on on Friday of last week um, because uh, Crystal took her down to uh, get assessed in Barry because uh, of a program that was actually feeling like she was going to be a good fit. They assessed her, and because of the animal to animal, they uh, they they denied her. Um, so. I completely agree that, that Crystal should be compensated for boarding a dog that's in our care. I'm troubled by the fact that it's been, you know, two months yep. and we're footing the bill for that. Yep. So I don't think we should be. And if, if, she's, if this dog, unfortunately, is failing all of these placement requirements, then it seems to me, it's, well, it's probably cruel to say, but euthanasia is probably the step we should be thinking. You know, I just don't think we should spend, you know, two months of, of kettle time on the, on the taxpayer's nickel. So I appreciate your opinion and your, and your thoughts on it. And I think we would all be in the same boat that we wish we could have, it could have been a different situation, but it wasn't, it was chosen by circumstances, unfortunately, so. Yeah, I, 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 I get all that. I'm just suggesting yeah. that we, and this is just my opinion, but that we need to, I don't think that can go on forever. No, it can go no. Go on for another no. month or two months no. or three months or six months. Or yeah, totally. I know when you know when we used to have memorial kennels available. Correct me if I'm wrong in Rosemary, but they would keep the dog for the specified period of time, and then it would be transferred to um, an memorial animal shelter. Yeah. Um, and I, I don't know what's broken down in that system, but. It seems to me that the humanes, that's what they're there for, um, is to house dogs that otherwise aren't you know, being taken care of. Um, yeah, and the first step in the yeah. process is NCAL, and, and she failed there, and Justice for Dogs was the next, and that's where she would have gone if we were not exited out of the kennel. Yeah, and again, I, yeah. You know, I hate to be cruel about it, but if the dogs are failing those tasks of those entities, um, it seems to me we have done our due diligence to try and find a you know, proper home, and the solution, unfortunately, is euthanasia. And I will express talking to Crystal if that is the direction that the town would like to go. Um, she has expressed that she would um, adopt the dog to <coughs> to wave away that from occurring. She would uh, she would sign over anything that she needed to do to then take over and take possession of that dog. She's still going to work to try and place it because it does not fit in her household either. But she also, um, you know. No, uh, just like you, nobody liked the idea of putting it on a dog just because the situation and because maybe they are a good fit and the perfect, you know, scenario. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, part of my reticence, uh, I don't like the idea of it in, in general, but I also don't like the idea that there are people out there who shouldn't have dogs to begin with who are just going to say, well, we can give it to the town, they'll care for it for you know, the next six months, you know, I don't have to feed it anymore. And, you know, that's, that's an unfortunate reality that we're also dealing with is, you know, some people shouldn't have dogs. Well, do you, and do that, you have a next step for this dog? Um, Not you, but like, is there a next step for this dog beyond Crystal adopting? Um, <coughs> beyond us trying to continue to place her places, that's that's basically what we've been trying to do is place her and we've had people trying to step forward, but they're individual people, not 
not a rescue or not a service, and I don't feel like, I don't know, in my mind, it's just my opinion, the dog being town property uh, should go to a, a rescue or an entity or a program, not, not necessarily, I I've gotten people that want to foster, but foster seems like that's, I don't so know. So if we have somebody who's willing to take ownership of this dog, and we've had this dog for two months, mm -hmm. we should be taking people who, if you're asking questions of how are you going to take care of this dog, and they have full awareness of animal to animal aggression, mm -hmm. and they're willing to take the dog, mm -hmm. it's theirs. But not fostering. But not fostering. Yes. If it's they want to adopt it. I know. It is yours, and we need to be really clear. And if somebody's saying they want to foster it, fostering isn't an option. Mm -hmm. If you'd like to take it, fine. But like, but I agree, the town can't house a dog forever. Yep. And if Crystal's the one who wants to adopt it, cool. If there's another individual who wants to adopt it, cool. Okay. Uh, How do we go about, because this is the first time we're doing this, yeah. we're all doing this, and I want to make sure that you know there's no liability or anything like that. Should we have some kind of official document yes. worked up that 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 someone can sign and so on and so forth? Yep. Um, because we, I mean, we've never just been in this situation. I don't even know if we should draft the document. If somebody wants to adopt the dog, take the dog and that person to NCAL or LDBS well, or the Humane Society, and the town hands the animal over to the entity, the entity does the paperwork for the person that the animal leaves with the owner. Well, what I don't think NCAL would be willing to because the dog has already failed their yeah. tests and, and yeah. basically like part of NCAL's paperwork is saying if you can't keep this animal, you can give it back to so us. So justice, we'll, you know, know, justice for dogs. They're all, gonna, they're they're all gonna say the same thing. Is yeah. what I'm according saying. to our ordinance, even if the stray is at the kennel, the ACO has to sign off on the owner even picking up the dog, or the dog being transferred to a to a rescue or, or something like that. So yeah, we we used to have some sort of a form. I just wanted for the to conveyance of a dog. I I, I, I drafted dog. something up and I could send it to you all to for you to look at. But I also wanted to ask just to make sure that uh, we didn't have something <laughs> random that we. Already exists. I move we adjourn. It's almost 10 o'clock. Is it really? Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, time flew. Uh, Tom, could you uh, look into whether there's any state laws that we need to be worried about as far as adoption? Um, yeah. Or we make a motion to euthanize this dog and let it go. We, we don't need to. If Crystal well, Lord is saying she'll adopt it. So it also we, doesn't, yeah. Dom, can you just work with Dean and figure out next steps for our agreement? And do we want our lawyer looking at it? We might have something available for BLCC. I think, I think there's a fairly standard form. Okay. We can't be the only town. Yep. As, you know, as Mark okay. has said in the past, we can't be the only town that's dealing with this issue. Okay, <clears throat> next item. Thank you, Tom. So you'll add that to your list. Do uh, you want to put a timeline on adoption versus select? A week. Seven days. And I also want to make absolutely sure that we followed all the statutory processes for trying to find the dog, you know, the posting of the notices, etc. I'm assuming that we have. Um, but yeah. Oh, yeah. And I also, just putting it back in there, we we need to come up with, a, with, a, with an answer for what we're going to do for the next dog. I meant to ask this, um, the the six yep. kennel spaces, how far would that go to well, like sure. meeting the demand uh, mm -hmm. of the, the affected yep. towns? Yep. That could probably meet sure. demand of like um, a majority of the towns, really. Was it your mom? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, next Thank up, you. dog standards of care. A report of care was made following what if I, is this the same thing? The animal in question, yeah, it's the same thing. Okay. Yeah. Do we have anything else on this one, Tom? 
Uh, no, an ACO organization I think is pretty much done too. All right, great. I think, I think debris management plan. Can we push this off? You emailed it yeah, out. We've got to read it. Yeah, got to read it. Um, so this is just. Could, so we have we agreed to have an intern, and the intern did a script summary of um, her work, which I think is worth you know at least acknowledging that she's been spending all these hours on. Um, so, she, so if you could read that, it's on page 19, and then page 20 is Appendix D. Um, this section is going to be for probably town officials to fill out another day, but just so you know what that is. I, I read the brief summary, but I don't know the same Yeah, I think it's more important to read her letter just to say that she did this and to acknowledge that. Yep. Um, that's really, I guess, all that it is. Wonderful. Um, yeah, I'll read it more thoroughly also. And I think that there are some roles that we don't need that we can pull out. I know. It did look um, like a really good first start, though. Yes. Okay, next up is tech assistance. Municipal tech assistance program. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's for. So the select board has to. That, if the directions are right on it, this is from. Um, State of Vermont, it's free. Um, specifically, this could be used for the EDA and Northern Borders to help Randall, but um, you have to add municipal tech assistance program participation to your next agenda and pass a motion indicating your decision to participate. Motion to participate. Do you have a second? Second. Any discussion? Aye. Is that good, Tom? All those in favor? All, All those in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. I don't know enough about it, so I'm not going to know. Can you abstain? Okay. Cool. Good. So I want, so it's systems. just towns that are uh, pre approved are received services for um, municipal technical assistance, and we met the pre approval, and so. Um, this I don't need to know about it. Okay. You guys already voted. But I do, I do think that we blew by something that I do think needs to be what? addressed, and that's a hierarchy of the animal control officers. I just asked Dean if he would be willing to be the primary animal control officer, and he said he would gladly do that. I think, Here I think is. there should be someone who is. There needs to be a point primary. to say, and actually, I I assumed that he was. So when I heard word of that complaint, I said, Dean, would you go visit the dog on site and just pull the ordinance, pull the state law, and make sure it's in compliance with everything? And he did it. He, and he did, and I think that's great. Yeah. But I think we should make that official, that he should be the, the primary animal control officer who will be other two. I would answer to it. Should we just kind of do it similar to like health officers, where there's a health officer and deputy health officers? Oh, that's just good. It just stays consistent. We could, you could call the other two deputy animal control officers. Or? Yeah, I guess that's what I'm proposing, but I don't know. Whatever. I, I, I just think it would be good to have one person that would be the primary. Do we need a motion for that, or is it the consensus? Let's just do it. I mean, they already is. We already effectively indicate that way. Right. So most. Yeah, but he, but he really doesn't have any legal authority to do that, and I don't think he's got that unless we get it done. Right now, he's he's the animal control officer <coughs> slash constable. They all have, and they're all the same. They all have equal powers under the ordinance to enforce the ordinance. Do we specify a difference between those powers and the ordinance? I don't believe so. Well, so then, we can't change it anyway, so it doesn't matter. What's that? So if we made a motion, it wouldn't really matter, would it? No, it doesn't matter. Yeah, I think it would because we would be authorizing him. No, because yeah. there's not a distinction. Wouldn't we have to amend the ordinance? Yeah. yeah. Uh, that's just a process question. I don't know. You're not answering this, but I think we save it for March and when you do appointments and the reorganization, you just, you just make those appointments. March of 25. 
There is no distinction between any role here and the hierarchy of roles. It just says enforcement officer and it lists off a bunch of different people. So and would that would be a good ordinance to put in it our probably would be. rolling review? Could be. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> okay. It's a good yeah. one. It is. And we do pay differently for the health officer. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um Executive session for real estate negotiations for one VSA 313A2. So moved. Shane's got that one. Duncan's a second. Beautiful. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Ayes have it. Let's roll down the road. Just